Time to clock in episode 61. We are back. Brand new year. Same old show. Every year's our year. Made a couple changes. I'm a little brighter. We look a little cuter. To my left is my boy, best friend, co owner, co creator, uh, rap artist, um, quarterback, flag football quarterback. <laughs> There's so many flag different Flag football little... quarterback. Talk to a rock. Happy New Year! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 2024, bringing in the year right. Rest in peace to my dog. Kobe, we love you. This year is for you. Mama mentality all year. You feel me? Yep. D-Rock is in the building. Ish is in the building. Y'all know what we came to do. It's been a long hiatus. Everybody took a Christmas break, so we yep. took a Christmas break. Um unintentionally right <laughs> <laughs> we fully prepared to bring on a guest a a reoccurring guest from now on which we will reveal next uh, episode but things happen and in yep. the world of technology things don't always work i will just real quickly let you guys because i haven't told ish exactly what happened yeah. so i'm about to tell this is kind of more so for him than y'all but stay with me because this is hilarious but so me and Ish and, a, like I said, an unnamed person are supposed to start doing three-person episodes. We're going to start having guests on this year and everything. Yep. So if you want to come on, let us know. Stop before I tell the story. Subscribe, like, subscribe, like, subscribe, like. Thank you. Comment, send it to your mom, send it yes, to your sir. granny, send it to everybody. Yes, sir. And <laughs> we're getting ready to do this episode. The last thing we need is a soundboard. Guess what, guys? I brought a soundboard three months ago off Amazon for this exact moment because I knew what the new year was bringing. I knew what we was trying to do. Yep. I go get a cord for said soundboard. Like, yeah, let's plug it up. Doesn't work. <laughs> like, so I go get another cord for said soundboard. <laughs> Doesn't work. <laughs> so I'm like, yo, how is this soundboard that says this for this specific person a purpose right. not working for this purpose? I go get another cord. Yep. I come back to the soundboard, the USB in the soundboard is broken. <laughs> I don't know how it broke. I still, right now, That's have crazy. no idea how that USB broke. I never heard it break. I yeah. never saw it snap. Nothing. I just came back, and it was broken. If you touch the soundboard, it's very cheap. I'm going to let it. I wish I sh we should have brought it in here so he could do a lot. But, but that soundboard is very cheap. Yeah. I shouldn't have brought it. My mistake. On to the next. Yeah. Guitar Center. We trying to get the show up done, done the day of. I dropped the Alpharetta. If you live in Atlanta, are you from anywhere in Metro Atlanta? You know how fucking far Alpharetta is. Even if you live in Alpharetta, you know how far you are from shit. Shout Alpharetta. Shout out off. No, do not shout Alpharetta. Fuck all <laughs> the way. That's one of the most racist counties in <laughs> Georgia. So we are never shouting them out. Except for Halcyon. They got this Mexican restaurant in there called CT. That motherfucker go crazy. So shout out to CT. No, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> However, I dropped the <laughs> I dropped a guitar center yeah. in Alpharetta to purchase this soundboard I ordered offline yep. that said, hey, this is in store. Come get it. Pick up today. Right. This is a podcasting USB soundboard mixer, 12 ports. Yep. Exactly what we need. <laughs> walk in the store. Y'all got a pickup order for D-Rock. Oh, for real? Yeah. I had on my shades. You know I walk in places with shades on people. Yeah. People get confused by that. He was like, bro, I like your style. That's real cool because there's a bunch of white people in there. Yeah. Black nigga. He was like, yeah, I fuck with you. you probably first you. black nigga he's seen in Come on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, he looks at the computer and he's like, oh, shit, yeah, man. You podcast. That's hard. Blah, blah, blah. And he just stops. <laughs> Did you get a confirmation email? I checked my email. Nah, I didn't, but it said it was in store. Yeah, it's not in store, brother. We don't carry that in store ever. Jesus, ever. <laughs> so what? Oh, okay. So y'all, y'all want me to, y'all want me to do some bad. Y'all, y'all want me to ruin, y'all want me to ruin everybody' holiday. Okay, cool, cool. So this is a de the day before Christmas. I want to say, or the day before Christmas Eve. Yeah. So at this point, I'm like, fuck it. We can't do the episode. All right, fuck it. I'm gonna just. I gave up that day. Yeah. Come back after I leave New York. Uh, maybe next episode I'll touch more on New York because we got a lot of shit to get to. Uh, New York was amazing. Shout out to New York. One of my favorite cities. Yeah, New York looks awesome. It's fucking crazy. Come back from New York. <laughs> I get another cord for the new soundboard that I eventually do get from Guitar Center. Right. First cord does not work. Second cord does not work. Third cord does not work. <laughs> but the difference is 
this is it's registering on my uh, garage band, unlike the other one. So yeah. I'm like, damn, something has to be given. Like, I called Javante, like, yo, what the fuck I can do? Watch a 30 YouTube videos. And I finally get to the YouTube video that is like, hey, I know this says it's a USB soundboard, but it does not work like it's a USB soundboard. That USB port is useless. Oh, wow. So... <laughs> So, after three hundred dollars, <laughs> yeah, I love you too. <laughs> like my nigga, like, yeah, I love you too. <laughs> nigga, it's just like fam, it's not going. <laughs> like, like I just, I walked in there and told her, I said, "Yo, it don't work." She said, "What you need? To, nope, just nothing. There's nothing I can." It's do. over. It's over. <laughs> so I returned the soundboard. I did two days worth of research of the new soundboard, and the new soundboard is here. It'll be, I mean, it'll be here Sunday, and we will start having a guest on. And that was my week leading up into New York. I was pissed. It was an awful week. Oh, yeah. I was busy as fuck at work when I wasn't supposed to be because yeah. it's the end of the year. So awful clothes from the 18th to the 23rd. Oh, but yeah. 24th on on has been great. Um that's beautiful. How have you been? <laughs> no, I've been almost equally as terrible. Like, <laughs> I, um, ironically enough, one of the days I was sick, I had a physical. If, if for the people that don't know, I've been sick for like a fucking week. Basically, I'm at, I'm not sick anymore. I just have bad allergies. Right. That's why I'm sneezing on camera. But <laughs> I had, uh, I just had a physical schedule. I like to go into the new year, you know, physical done. You know, these are the goals I'm going to set last year. You know, hit the goals. You know, have a plan going into the new year. Make sure everything's cool. But this, this is so funny. I didn't know this. I didn't know doctors, like, changed which where they at every day. Oh, yeah, I yeah, thought yeah. doctors just, oh, yeah, this is where I work. Yes. This is where I come in. No, no, yeah. no. So <laughs> I look up at my appointments in, like, Hampton, Georgia. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go. Like, it's important. I'm going to go. <laughs> Drive an hour to Hampton. I walk in there, you know, and of course we live in Georgia, Atlanta. No drive is ever how long it should be. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like 45 minutes from Hampton. Mm -hmm. Took about an hour. Of course, of course. My appointment is at like 1:30. Uh -huh. I walk in there at 1:40. I was outside on the phone with my mom, like telling her a bunch mm -hmm. of stuff. Nothing, anything of it. I walk in there at like 1:40. She like, oh yeah, you too late. We got to reschedule. I said, what the fuck, you mean I'm too late? <laughs> I just drove an hour. She said, yeah, well, the check-in time. I was like, so you can make me wait 30 minutes, <laughs> but I can't be tempted. So I said, all right, cool. I'm going to let you have You know what? That's I, crazy. I, you know, I'm not That's the nigga to spaz as on as people. Well. You know, I don't, I'm not the person to like, mm. yell at like, mm. like, you know, people at work. Yes. I don't know what she's going through. I said, right, you know, I'm going to let you have it. Reschedule me for two days. I said, all right, cool. I come back in two days. Drive the hour again. This time, I'll make sure I'm on time. Walk in there, one thirty on the dot. She, I start signing in. She said, "Oh yeah, we meant to call you." I stop writing. I'm in the middle of writing, like you know, you fill out this shit. Mm -hmm. She said, "Oh yeah, I meant to call you." I just stop writing and look up. What you mean you meant to call me? She said, "Oh yeah, the doctor's not here. Where are they? Where? What do you mean they're not here?" She said, "Oh yeah, she's sick. We had to cancel all her appointments." That's not how that works. I said, "Pull up. Who called me? Pull up. Who called me right now?" <laughs> like I'm so close to spazzing. I said, "Pull up. Who, you know." She's, she's looking through it. She, oh, we forgot. I said, I looked at her and said, you know it's my health, right? Like, we, like you don't work at Best Buy. Like, this is my doctor. Like, I am, this is, like, this is not something you should be like, all right, well, can't do this today. Like, I am here for a reason. This is not my iPad. Yo, yeah, oh, like, we're not the apples. <laughs> like, bro. But other than that, it's been great. And that my message is for, like, for certain people, if you hate your job, change. In certain people, you should not be there if you hate your job. Like, that's a very I've been important message. A week and a half. Like, I'll be messaging my doctor mm -hmm. on, like, the little app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, tell her. She's like, well, you got to come in. I'm trying. Like, <laughs> but, bruh, if you're one of those people that just, you know, listen, and I'm for sure one of them, I want to do your job and go home, you know, maybe don't work <laughs> in, like, in, in healthcare. A place where you can't just do that. Like, <laughs> in yeah. healthcare, where you're but, taking uh, care of sick humans. Yeah, literally. <laughs> come but on, dog. Other than that, great end of the new year. Got to spend it with some family, saw some Beautiful. old friends. Beautiful. Watched some good football. Man. Um, didn't we? And that's where that's where we can Didn't we? Yeah, that's where we could pick it up. Game of the year. Yeah, game of the year. We'll we will start there. Yeah. 
It was really two games of the year that one turned into a bad, a real bad game of the year. Uh, Ravens yeah. and 49ers and Ravens and Dolphins. The Ravens showed y'all what I've been telling y'all all season. So let's, as I said, let's get right into it. Ravens yeah. and 49ers. That was Christmas Day, wasn't it? Yeah, yes, Christmas sir. night. One of my favorite. That was like, like beautiful. Wow, beautiful. Great Christmas. And then the beautiful thing was that like the Philly – Sixers game that nobody was playing in was at eight o'clock right yeah. after everybody you cared about had just played and right perfect perfect yep. <laughs> Ravens and Forty Nine ers play which I spoiler alert think will be the Super Bowl preview. I want to start off asking Ish because y'all like I've told you I've watched every Ravens game this year. This has been like the, the Ravens and the Eagles and the 49ers and three teams that I'm really, really locked into. I wanted to right. be locked into the upper echelon of the NFL so when it came to playoff time I knew what the fuck I had really been watching all year. Yeah. So the Ravens have looked dominant these past two weeks. Right. I wanna I don't want to start with the MVP conversation because that's be obvious. Right. I wanna ask you does what on the Ravens scares you more, Lamar Jackson or their defense? I'm going to say Lamar Jackson. And and for a, kind of a different reason, a lot of people say, of course he's going to be the MVP. Of course he's Lamar Jackson. But on that third and 18 or whatever it was, that felt so different than I've seen in the NFL mm-hmm. probably in my life. Mm-hmm. Like where it's third and – Forever, he breaks the pocket, and it's the best linebacker of this generation, and he does not get a hand on him. Like, the, 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 the game is completely different. You just tackle him, you kick, you know, keep it moving. The game is still in the balance right now. And he's jogging up the field, and nobody can touch him. And the reason that he was the most scary part heading into the playoffs for me is because he's due. For, uh, you know, couple. You know, his first playoff game is charged. You know, he got no receivers. Still running a basic offense. He only been starting a couple games. Cool. And they like to count that shit against him. That shit is so. He lame, didn't even start the whole year. That it's crazy. So lame, dog. It's crazy because he it, people forget that season. He pulled them out of the mud in the middle of the season. No, and made them a playoff team. This shit is lame. Bro. Then the next playoff game, he has like a bunch of yards of total offense. Touchdown drops. Bunch of drops. They you know they Blame lose. Blame that on him too. But now, he feels really due. For a, oh, yeah, it's no weird drops, no weird injuries. Everybody's healthy except for Mark Andrews, but. And he might be back. He might be back, but it feels like one of these days, it feels like kind of like the Jokic thing. It was like, mm-hmm. man, you better not be on the other end of that when it's time, when it starts rolling. Facts. Because there's really nothing you can do. Uh-huh. The Ravens defense, I think, can be had by certain types of offenses. We'll talk about the 49ers, which I don't know. I just think it was a bad matchup for them. Mm-hmm. But. I would be more worried about Lamar because it's just nothing. There's not a play you're going to call mm-hmm. that's going to keep you from, like, if he decides, okay, the play's over, I'm getting out, there's no play that you can have pre-scripted, like, oh, yeah, you're going to get him or we're going to do this. <laughs> like, it's really just hopefully we're <laughs> in the right spot when he does yeah. or it'll be a first down. And it's just, it's so deflating kind of. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. The answer to the question is Lamar Jackson. Yeah. That defense is phenomenal. Absolutely. And they fly to the football. We yeah. have been speaking since October about the importance of having a primary A plus linebacker next to a primary B plus linebacker and yep. what that d- and how that translates to a A plus and an A plus linebacker because of Roquan, Fred Warner, Trey Greenlaw, Luke yep. Keekley, Thomas Davis, Ray Lewis, Terrell Suggs, Brian Urlacher, um what's my boy? Lance Briggs. Yep. So it is a it's a a needed combination, I will say, for a great defense. Not right. a good defense. A great defense has to have two really good linebackers. Yep. So the Ravens have that. They have a great defensive line. I think they have a closer, a defensive line closer in Jadavian Clowney. Yep. He has been that this year. So mm-hmm. I know in previous years, no, he has not been that. But if you have been watching Ravens football, you know what that signing did for them this year. Yeah. Jadavian Conley has been a monster all year. And I would even consider Kyle Hamilton kind of a hybrid closer. Oh, yeah, the player. way they blitz with the him, The way for they sure. blitz with him, yeah. absolutely. So, but as I was saying, Lamar Jackson is the answer. And simply put, the reason why is he touches the ball every play. <clears throat> Yeah. With defense, I can run away from Roquan. Yep. I can pass away from Kyle. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. I can pick Kyle up on the blitz. I can pass away from Marlon. I yeah. can double team Clowney, or I can uh, uh, double team Judon. I think his name is. I think I might be slipping on his name. I'm um, number ninety nine. I might be slipping on his name, but I can double team a good defensive right. lineman. What Lamar is nothing you can do. Oh, oh, but but have a spy, yeah. and it's not gonna work. Yeah, the, yeah. You might be able to do the college thing they was just doing with Jalen Miro and have two spies, yeah. but in the NFL, too good. Niggas are too good for you. You're, you're leaving up too much. You're, it's too much yeah. open space on the field for a NFL for NFL receivers not to exploit that. Yeah. So yes, Lamar is more scary than that Ravens defense, but that Ravens defense is going to be the reason they win the Super Bowl. Yeah. Lamar is going to get them there. Yeah. Lamar's leadership, his MVP uh, aura will yeah. get them to the Super Bowl. But that defense is going to get big stop after big stop after big stop. Yeah. And the reason I believe that is because I have been watching them do it all year. I don't know if you know this, but the Ravens should be undefeated right now. Their three losses are laughable. If you go back and watch those la- the three games they have lost, you would be like, how in the hell did they lose these games to these teams? I don't know if they st- it's still the record, but right now they might be the only team in NFL history to hold a lead in every game yes. they play. Yes, in the fourth, in the fourth quarter. quarter. Yes, yeah. that is which still is ridiculous. Stands. That still stands. Yes, <laughs> which is and that ridiculous. is an NFL record, and it probably won't st- see through because I do think they'll lose to Pittsburgh because I don't think Lamar is going to play this week. Um, maybe. And- I can see him playing to go get another touchdown. No, no, I can see them winning. <laughs> I can see oh, them without, winning. without. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Low key. You're right. <laughs> let me not. Let me not get ahead of myself. You are yeah. completely right. I don't want to. I don't want to jump the Super Bowl yet. So let's let's jump to the 49ers and right. talk more so about the game. How do you think the Ravens exploited them offensively? Right. And we'll start there. How do you think the Ravens exploited their defense? Well, the problem with what the 49ers want to do is it so I thought it was a bad matchup for the 49ers the more I watch it mm-hmm. because how the 49ers kind of want to beat you yeah uh, starting on defense they kind of want their front seven to dominate well, I don't want to say kind of they want their front seven to dominate the games mm-hmm. but the problem is Lamar Jackson a lot of people think like when you're a running quarterback like teams automatically don't like like you're just back there making people miss no 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 they don't want Lamar to get out the pocket. They don't want to rush Lamar. Like, they are rushing differently than they would rush versus other quarterbacks who can't move as well or other quarterbacks who are worse against the Blitz. Lamar and what the Ravens are doing since he's been on fire all season versus the Blitz is they are perfectly fine with you blitzing at all times. Mm -hmm. And what you'll see in different games versus different quarterbacks, that's not how that is. There are certain checks, certain hots where people see the blitz, they're going. But that's not always the case with Lamar. So the plays that even where Nick Bosa gets a good rush, Chase Young gets a good rush, like when he tripped over the ref, like that is good enough versus everybody else. You just can't guard Lamar that way. Mm -hmm. And as of now, we don't know how you actually do guard Lamar. But what they're – everything – it's kind of like guarding Steph in the NFL. In the NFL. All the rules that you have and all the things that you've been training yourself to do your whole life, no matter, no longer work in the most important game of your life. Perfect example. Like when Lamar breaks that pocket and Fred Warner's first instinct is, let me get outside, make sure he doesn't get outside. That is the right move versus every other quarterback, every other running quarterback, except maybe him and Michael Vick. Because the difference is Lamar is moving so under control while running faster than you because he's jogging and you're sprinting. He can just turn the other way. So you really never cut him off. You were never within arm's reach of him because the way he's moving, you can't practice it. And that's what the that's the thing about the Ravens record. Everybody's talking about the Ravens record versus the NFC. That is like the perfect way to sum up Lamar Jackson. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes it's just no defense. It's just and we said this with the Lions, we said this with the 49ers. It's just no, you can't practice it. You can't like like the Dolphins game. I don't want to jump games, but like he drops back left handed. Switches to his right and throws the ball. That play does not have to end with a pass. Like, that play could end so many different ways. And it's so much to prepare for. And now he has help. <clears throat> and I think that's the biggest difference. All right. I'm going to hit a couple things you said. Yeah. First, I'm going to go to the running aspect of him. Yeah. He has a running back like feel. 
a couple episodes I spoke about how Christian, why Christian McCaffrey is so dynamic, and that has to do with his vi- his uh, balance, his vision, his feel with the ball in his yeah. hand. And for the viewers that younger viewers or the viewers that just are getting into football, this is something that you can look for. When you see a, a guy like Lamar Jackson, he never is running full speed. Right. You, I have not seen. I've seen Lamar get to full speed maybe once this year. The reason that is is because he is so fast. Yeah. If he gets to full speed, he's not going to be able to stop on a dime right. like he would if he is at three quarter speed. Yeah. So, like Ish is saying, yo, I'm already running faster than you at my three quarter speed. So now I'm in such in control of my body. I'm reacting to how you're reacting to me. Yeah. So you'll see somebody lunge at Lamar and then he reacts. Lamar doesn't juke. Lamar doesn't try to juke you yeah. before you try to tackle him. Right. He does it as you're trying to do, which is absurd. It's nuts. It's nuts. It reminds me of like a Barry Sanders. If you've seen Walter, Pay- Walter Payton run. You know what it reminds me of? Shady. Shady. Yes. Shady. That's a great example. Yep. Great example. Shady McCoy. Yeah, hell yeah. Those running backs that just had a natural feel, natural agility, natural bounce to where you can't ever hit them hard. You've right. never seen Lamar Jackson get popped. Not, you know. Never. No. Because you can't. He just understands how to run in the open field. Next. To the 49ers, I think their biggest issue is – the reason he is 19 and 121 in the NFC is you don't see Lamar Jackson. At all. And as you said, it's nothing you can replicate to prepare you for what you're going to deal with. So, yeah, I can put, uh, what's my boy's name, Ray Ray McLeod at quarterback for yeah. the scout team. But one, he don't know how to play quarterback. He, he don't know how yards. to throw the ball. He yeah. can't throw 60 yards. He's not as fast as Lamar Jackson. He's not as agile in him. And you, that's your teammate. You can't even really hit him now. Yeah. So it's so many factors. And, and so he's why- still somehow not as fast as him. Exactly. <laughs> like he's still exactly. somehow not as fast as him. <laughs> exactly. Is nothing so it's literally nothing you can do in practice to replicate what you're going to see. So your first your first um your first whiff of it is the game time. Yeah. And as the Ravens game went, if I jump out to a 14 point lead, yeah. 17 point lead, I got all control now. I can play Lamar's playing free. Yep. I got the whole feel. I got the whole playbook. Yeah. It's no stress on me. You you now you press it. Yeah. It got to the point like it said the defense alignment literally was not rushing the quarterback. Stop rushing the quarterback. They were just coming up and chopping their feet and yeah. making sure Lamar didn't leave the pocket. Yeah. Hope, hope <laughs> and hoping he didn't get out anyway. And hoping he didn't get out anyway yep. despite that. Because a couple times he did. Yep. <sighs> but where I do think the Ravens have a weakness, because we can't just say they're perfect because yeah. every team has a weakness. I think they have two weaknesses. I think them not having a a big receiver target you yeah. can trust and them not having a true number one running back yeah. I think can come back – to hurt them. Do I think it will? No. I'm right. nitpicking because this is as close to a perfect football team as we'll see them in the 49ers. Right. So I'm nitpicking. But the reason I say – Zay Flowers is their best receiver this year. I will say that again. Zay Flowers, a 5'8 rookie, is the best receiver right, right now. For sure. Odell Beckham is their second best receiver right now, third best receiver depending on the day. Right. The issue with OBJ is OBJ is 5'10". Yeah. So if OBJ was DeAndre Hopkins and he was 6'2", 6'3", and you could throw him some jump balls, that'd be different. Right. You can throw the OBJ some jump balls, but it has to be a perfect scenario. Right. Well, with DeAndre, you could just throw it up there. So I think that could come back and hurt them. And I do think Gus Edwards is a little slow. And I think, um, what's my boy's name? Not Keenan Mitchell, the other one. Oh, man, I'm uh, Hill. 43. Yeah, Hill. Yeah. I think he just is lacking experience. He doesn't have the best of vision. Right. But the, issue, the, the cheat code with this is, your running game is so much different with the threat of Lamar because yep. every handoff is a read option. Right. Damn, unless you understand it, which they rarely are, every almost every handoff is a read option. So it slows your your linebackers down, knowing yeah. All right, he might keep this. <laughs> and, <laughs> he and, might keep this. And the threat of it is just enough. But like what you were saying about like the way Lamar runs. It's like watching Floyd fight where it feels like, man, he's going so much faster than you. <laughs> Bro. Like, what? He's really – and it is almost 
unfair to try to describe like just tackling uh, him one on one because you see it when he does the read option sometimes where he'll keep it knowing the read defender kept him and he'll dare him to pick a move. <laughs> and you see him do it so much. He did it at I think versus I think it was the Bills a couple mm. years ago. Whatever game they said, it's not fair that he wear black goes, mm. which yeah, is yeah, hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he took the read option and just, just start moving. <laughs> just, just wait for you to panic because you know you're not fast. Yeah. And, and it's amazing to watch. Um, I love the offense, the way it's it's opened up. It's opened up, but you can tell everyone's super comfortable. Okay. Everyone's super comfortable. It felt like in the earlier years, you know, everyone knew Lamar needed a wide receiver. And Marquise Browns, Hollywood, love him to death. He's not a he's not a wide receiver one. And no. and they were in games where you could tell they were like, Man, we need you to make wide receiver one plays. They yeah, don't have people couldn't. do that anymore. They still you know, Odell, great intermediate, great middle of the field, still sits in zones well, knows how to get open, catches everything. You saw him do that early in the game a couple of times. Right before they scored, uh, I forget what touchdown it was. He sat right in the middle of his own, got punched, fell down, mm-hmm. cool. Um, he's looking better every single week. Of course, he made that insane catch. Shout out Odell. But I want to give you props because you mentioned this when it happened. I think their biggest X factor right now offense might be Isaiah Likely. It is, my brother. <laughs> that, <laughs> that speed yeah. he has in the middle of the yeah. field is just like, Fuck, we got to deal with that now, too. Yeah. Because with Mark Andrews, Mark was just going to get open. Like, right. Travis. Like, Travis was just uh, three or four years ago, Travis might take one to the crib. But yeah, facts. Uh, now, Travis is just going to get open. He's going to sit in the zone. He's going to run his routes perfectly. Yep. You're not going to be able to stop him. He's never going to fumble. But with Isaiah, yeah. he is catching everything that's coming his way. But he can run with the He's ball. catching it. He's on his horse. He's <laughs> on his horse. He's moving. He's <laughs> moving yeah. with determination. And he he's a big dude. Yes. Like, that's a a real tight end, like yeah. a, like oh, he plays tight he end. He is like, solid. Like, like Brock Bowers look like a tight end. He's definitely like that. Like that when we grew up, that's what tight ends look like. Exactly. Niggas who was supposed to be wide receivers <laughs> but was too big. Yeah, like that nigga. If yes. he was smaller, he'd be a wide receiver for sure. But he's not, so he got to be a tight end <laughs> for sure. Like that one hand catch, disgusting, like, bro. On fourth down, yeah. Disgu- like, like come on, bro. They, I just knew they was tripping. I said, oh y'all boys tripping now. No, no, I was watching tripping. that shit. I was like, bro, they are tweaking that's out of these. Arrogant. They are tweaking, my nigga. You went one hand pick, one hand touchdown. Like that's some mad shit. Like, like that shit would for sure. Me out. Like, for sure, I'd be pissed. Uh, game manager. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, shout out Cam. <laughs> shout out my nigga Cam. I know Cam had a great Cam, holiday season. Cam been right about everything Cam for like had a, a month now. Yeah. Fuck it. Let's start. all right. Let's all right. Brock Purdy. Let's flip, 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 flip it to 49ers offense. Of course, did not show up versus the game. I don't want to say did show up because they did show up. They just got the shit beat out of them when they got there. <laughs> um, <laughs> So, what did you see quarterbacky wise? Oh, from Brock Purdy <laughs> with the four picks in that game, and, and what did you did you see? It was something that can kind of be replicated by other teams, or did you think like, man, this is just Ravens? All right, yes and no. Right, what I saw, and I'm saying yes and no to do I think this is something that can be replicated by other teams? Yes and no to that question. Okay, no. Okay, I'll start with yes. Yes, what I saw is him get rattled when they got down. Yeah. When he wasn't playing with the lead, when he wasn't in a comfortable position, he had caused his team to fall from behind. It didn't look like he had the confidence in himself yeah. to have a quick memory right. and on to the next drive. Yeah. I say no, though, <laughs> because the 49ers are better than everybody else. That's a fact. Well, that's the issue. It's that's like, yeah, it's cool. Like, yes, the blueprint is, all right, let's get the ball first score, try to get up 10-0, 13-0, 14, you know, and 14-3 and make Brock Purdy play from behind. Right. But <laughs> yeah. who's going to do that? Right. The, it's definitely easier said than done. And the only team that I could see doing that is the Eagles yeah. because they got the number one seed, so somebody's going to have to come to SoFi and do it. Yeah. The Eagles are the only team I trust, and the Lions, I will say. And the only reason I trust the Lions is because I think that ignorant level of confidence Dan Campbell has instilled into that locker room yeah. is contagious, facts. and they are going to go in every playoff game like we don't give a fuck who on that side yeah, of the line. Facts. And that means something. Yeah. Every other team I think is going to walk in there like they the 49ers, yeah. and whew, like yeah. we got a tough one, y'all. The, the Eagles <laughs> and the Lions the only team yeah. I think will walk in there like I don't give a fuck. 
believing that, knowing that about those teams, I still don't think it's a roster that can play them in the way the, way the Ravens did, that can force them to play from behind right. unless Brock Purdy comes out and throws a pick or unlucky fumble or something, punt return for a yeah. touchdown, something crazy like that. So that is my issue. The, okay, so let's bring this all in. I would say the blueprint to knocking – the 49ers out of the playoffs will be to make them playoff schedule. Right. Kyle Shanahan is too good. He yeah. is too smart. And his weapons, the weapons on that team are too elite for you to let them march down the field exactly how they want to. Yeah, exactly. All right, this is my script, and I get to follow it from quarter one to quarter four. Right. You cannot let that happen. Okay. You have to force that defense to play with pressure, and you have to force Brock Purdy to feel the pressure. Those are my two – Yes, that's how you do it. Yeah, but I don't know if you can. So I, from from a from an X's and O's standpoint, I think I your answer is completely right because this it's the same answer from this side, from the X's and O's side, where I think there is a blueprint that the Ravens have for the 49ers, but good luck, <laughs> good fucking luck, Charlie. right? Right? Because what the Ravens <laughs> did was they said, all right, we're gonna six seven in the box. Mm-hmm. But we are going to come up and we are going to jam, press, bump, hit all these receivers. Mm -hmm. And what I saw the most out of Brock or lack thereof or did not see was I think his arm strength limitations worry me come playoff time because so many more of those plays are going to be off schedule. And where you see him struggle is off schedule throws that require that type of talent. And that is how teams are going to defend him. And much like the NBA, the NFL is officiated much different in the postseason. This is the same. And, you know, listen, y'all know how I feel about Brock Purdy. I was, you know, one of the first. <laughs> but this is the same scheme that stop Brady, stop Manning, stop Kurt Warner to stop any high powered offense. The first thing you do is disrupt the timing. And I think what the Ravens were able to do, especially as the game progressed, was the perfect way to try to, you know, dethrone this team. Because I was watching it the first drive, I was like, damn, he looks good. Like, man, was I wrong? Like, oh shit. Like, they might, they might, they finna duke it out right here. And he threw the pick. I was like, yes, there we go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Mm -hmm. It's over. And. I would not – listen, I think the 49ers are an amazing team. I definitely think if I had to pick, and we are going to pick, I don't know if they're going to be my Super Bowl pick because I think it's a couple teams in the NFC that could do it. Okay, let's go there then. Right. Biggest threat to the Ravens, biggest threat to the 49ers. Let's do, let's do 49ers since I, since I got the list fresh. NFC, and I don't want people to look at this crazy until you think about please it. Please say it, please say it, please say it. It's the Rams. Yes, the Rams. Yes, yes. One thousand percent. Thank the Rams. you. I think that is thank the you. worst case scenario for the Niners. Thank you. Do you have a quarterback who's on fire and don't give a fuck? And listen, <laughs> y'all the Niners. That's cool. Like, that's <laughs> right, <nice>. nigga. <laughs> right. Matthew Stafford been in the league a long time. Mm-hmm. He done seen a lot of big dogs. Matthew Stafford himself Came in with Ray Lewis and Brian yeah. Urlacher and AJ Hawk and them boys like you don't give a fuck. Yo, tell, yo he played against all them for real. And like, he played in a division with that Packers defense yeah. and the Vikings defense that used to with Harrison Smith and all them boys. Bro, like, facts. Man. I would say the Rams won just because you have that Shanahan who's always you know Shanahan McVay McVay's always diced him up but now we haven't seen them two top of their peaks Kyle Shanahan and McVay both with all their weapons, all their talent heading into these games. The Rams have a really sneakily good supporting cast around Matthew Stafford. Yes, Cooper Cup looking really good. Nikua yes, is crazy. And Williams, that running back is real. Yes, sir. And I think with someone with the talent of Aaron Donald who can control the front as much as he can, that gives you the free reign. Press the receivers. Be physical. I would love to see. I, that is probably my one. Two, Philly. Three, Dallas. Mm-hmm. Who else is? Oh, and Detroit. four, Detroit. Mm-hmm. I think Detroit 1,000%. 
because I don't think Detroit will have the the facilities to stop them the way the other teams are. That's why I have them last. Mm-hmm. But if you told me Detroit, because you know Jericho needs a dome, but you know it's beautiful in San Francisco, <laughs> right? It might as well be a dome, right? Like, but if you told me. It was 35-35. Dan Campbell went for it with four minutes left on his 25, and they got it. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Like, this team has weapons everywhere, mm-hmm. for real. And Jameer Gibbs, man. And Ben Johnson. Listen, and, and, you know, we might throw this up on the Twitter. You know, we be doing a little comparisons mm-hmm. every once in a while. I don't know which rookie running back I like better. I don't know if I like behind more than Gibbs right now. And a lot of that, sure, behind for sure plays for Arthur yeah. Smith. But that Gibbs boy, he's nasty. He's bro, a he's special. He's bro. a special talent. Because I thought, I thought he was gonna be like AK kind of. Because mm-hmm. you know, with Alabama, he had the tape. Mm-hmm. You know, smooth. Nah, he feel like he feel like Jamal Charles. That's a good comparison, and and that's a little throwback for everybody. That's a great comparison. But he looks he's a small guy, but super strong, and puts that foot in the ground. Like, Gift to it, yes, yeah. Sir. You better be on your horse, but those would be my four. We'll, we'll switch. I'll let you do your four, and we'll do AFC. I don't really have to do anything. You have my list, really. I, <laughs> yeah, that's my exact list. That's I list. think the Rams are the biggest threat to them, division rival. Yep, I think Matthew Stafford. Yeah. I think the lack of giving a fuck about you being the 49ers. Yeah. I think the comfortability with going to play in so far. Right. I think Sean McVay wanting to get that one up on Kyle Shanahan, yeah, not a road game. Non rogue, like I, it's a lot, it's yeah. a lot, it's a lot that goes into why I think the Rams are the biggest threat. The but since you did it mostly hit on that, I'm gonna go to the Eagles in Dallas real quick, right? Dallas, I don't think it's a cool threat. I think where we, our lists differ is Detroit is above Dallas on okay. me. I think Dallas going in there and getting beat by 40 is their confidence is gone. Yeah. I also think they know how to contain that defensive line. Yeah. And if that defensive line gets no pressure, Dallas does not have a good defense. It's nice. simple as that. Yeah. That defense is good because their defensive line is good. When their defensive line is not good, Dallas is not good. Yeah. The Eagles, though. I think the Eagles, other than the Ravens, I think the Eagles probably have the third best roster roster football. So, not I don't know why I said other than the Ravens, but the Eagles have the third best roster in football, in my opinion. My issue with the Eagles is, and Ish, you're my brother. I have no ego. Yeah. <laughs> and so one thing I like to do is tell you, when yo, you might be right about something. Yeah. And the reason I have an issue with the Eagles. And they're not number one because right. roster construction wise, they, they should, should be, be number yep. one. Season wise, they've had a good season up until the last couple of weeks. They should be number one. Yeah. The number one threat. They're not because I don't know if Nick Sirianni is a good coach. I'm telling you, bro. Ish has been saying it for two months. Oh. And I kept trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. Yep. But as a average football watcher, yeah. when I watch your team, lose in virtually the same way yeah. or have issues, the same issues yep. week after week, offensively and defensively, defensively and offensively, mm-hmm. I have to say maybe this is coaching. Mm-hmm. That, first off, you were up 21-6 to six on the Arizona Cardinals. The Cardinals. Why the fuck did that game end up 28-28? to 28? Versus the Cardinals. And how, what's left of and what's left of that Cardinals defense? How does that game end up twenty eight to twenty eight? Fuck it, it yeah. does. It's twenty eight twenty eight. You have you get a penalty, you have a first and fifteen, yep. and you run a quarterback draw. Q-B when you draw. have the a quarterback power, yeah. The worst. Why your power. Is hurt? Why your, Why your quarterback is hurt? Is hurt. Yep. It's week seventeen, yep. and you're playing the Cardinals. And DeAndre Swift has been doing whatever he wants all thousand day. yard rusher. Hit 1,000 yards that damn game. Yep. First and 15, you run a quarterback draw. Second and 17, they run, you guessed it, a quarterback draw. Yep. (laughs) Third down and 20, you have A.J. Brown, arguably the best receiver in football. You have Devontae Smith. I don't think it's a question. He's the second, but he's the best number two in football. Him and T. Higgins. Yep. And you have Dallas Goddard. Top five tight end. For sure. They run a screen to their third string running back. <laughs> Yo. 
this is 28 28 yeah. with the ball on their 20 on the Cardinals 25 for the division for the division for the you division. win this game you win the division yeah and they settle for a field goal and their defense gives up a touchdown to Kyla Murray yeah. and company with 15 seconds left and they lose the game to the Arizona Cardinals yeah. it is in Embarrassing. To a coach that and she that wouldn't is an promote. that is an indictment on Nick Sirianni. Yep. That is an indictment on how he is managing the game, how he is how he is week to week with the preparation of the offense because the offense looks the same. Yes. You have you have regular spectators knowing what plays you're about to run because your offense hasn't changed in two years. Right now, the defense. I can let the defense not be so much your fault because you don't claim to be a defensive coach. So I'm not going to throw you a bunch of blame. But you're going to get all the blame for this offense right. because this offense looks bad. Jalen Hurts is doing what he can. And for your people that are trying to talk about how this is Jalen's fault or Jalen was better or Jalen was that, I promise yeah. to God, if you had a regular quarterback back there, a Gardner Minshew, yeah. a Baker Mayfield, no, no. something of that caliber, this Eagles team would have won six games this year maybe. Yeah. Jalen Hurts is covering – Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown and DeAndre Swift are covering a – and I would say that offensive line – are covering a lot, a lot of slack yeah. for Nick Sirianni. So, Nick Sirianni went to the Super Bowl last year. Nick Sirianni up until three weeks ago was the number one seed. Nick Sirianni, um, Nick Sirianni last year was the number one seed. Yep. Nick Sirianni has done a lot of good things since he's been in Philadelphia. Yep. But <laughs> who is the coach for the Indianapolis Colts? Steichen, right? Or right? Like Former that. Eagles offensive coordinator last yep. year. Who is the uh, head coach for the Arizona Cardinals? Rich Gannon. Wait, defensive no, coordinator for the yes, yeah, this defensive coordinator for the Arizona for the Eagles last year. Yep. So you lost your best coordinators, both sides of the ball, both sides of the ball. That Eagles defense that was dominant set the sacks record was like, oh my god, this offensive line. We got Jalen Carter. It's finna, I mean, defensive line, Jalen Carter. Oh my god, we finna go crazy. Yep. Second best D line ever. They said, been shit this year. Terrible. That offense. Oh, Jalen Hurts might be a top three, top four quarterback. Oh, my God. Is Jalen Hurts better than Lamar Jackson? Is Jalen Hurts, Patrick Mahomes, and Josh Allen a conversation? Oh, my God. Is A.J. Brown the best offense in football? Oh, my God. Oh, yep. my God. Oh, my God. Y'all offense was so good. They had Jason. Jason Kelsey is important now. Yeah. They got Jason Kelsey a star. Facts. And <laughs> they be like, look at Jason. Look at him pulling. And now yeah. regular spectators know what a center is doing. Yeah. <laughs> because of how good that offense was. No, that's a fact. I um. So, I was early on the – you know, I don't think I don't know if he's a good coach, but now that I know, I've begun asking my Eagles friends different questions because mm-hmm. I got a lot of Eagles friends out there, a lot of diehard Eagles fans. Shout out to y'all, shout out Alex, shout out a bunch of I ain't gonna name nobody but Alex because Alex is my man league. So shout okay. out Alex. But I asked him the other day, I said, so what does Nick Sirianni do? <laughs> like, <laughs> so what does he do? Because he doesn't mm-hmm. call plays. You are an offensive guy. You got hired to call plays. If you were over your skis when you started calling plays, so you had somebody step up and call plays for you. Salute. I love delegation. No one when you can't do something. A salute to that. But so you don't call plays. You don't call defensive plays. You're not a defensive coach. You got the worst deep. You got bottom five defense in the league. You fired your DC midseason after saying we're gonna all stick together to go hire, you know, brought in Matt Patricia. To run the DC now, but the offense. Who's next, Nick? You, you gonna fire another coordinator? Because it wasn't like this with the, with the year before. That's not his fault. Like, what do you do? And I think Nick Sirianni needs to be really, really, really careful. <laughs> because one thing Philadelphia don't do is lose. They may not win the Super Bowl every year, but what they won't have is incompetence. They they are not a patient franchise. Or city. Or city. Like, the the Eagles had one loss and was getting booed at the game because there is a certain standard. And I'm blanking on You're not going to cheat us. Yeah, what's the coach's name from Jacksonville? I'm, I'm blanking on Doug Peterson. This. Yeah, ask Doug Peterson, who beat Bill Belichick and Tom Brady in the Super Bowl <laughs> with his backup and was out of there two in the next later. two years. <laughs> that is nuts, dog. <laughs> and think the, they think that you did not even win your Super Bowl. So this is the time to make sure you are valuable. Agreed. And going into the playoffs, I think – you know, they feel like the Bills of the NFC. 
which is weird because I, and even me, Arr, I tell people first. all the time, like the Bills have an accomplishment number, so I don't like comparing them to teams that comes number, but like they are a muffed muffed kickoff or a muffed punt from collapsing in the wild card round. Where they they are a drop pass, they're a, a holding penalty on third down from everyone needing to find somewhere else to live in a different city. Cause Jalen, that contract ain't ink, baby. This ain't Carson Wentz. He ain't going nowhere. He ain't going. Jalen ain't going and AJ leave. not going nowhere. Facts. Everybody else in that locker room. Yep. But, but, <laughs> you think Fletcher Cox came back to lose? You think Jason Kelsey gonna sit back? To lose? Listen, oh, come on. Now is the time because if it ain't this year, it's gonna be a long. It's gonna be a long time till you you are where you are. Agreed. It's you ha- right now, and we'll talk about uh, the young quarterbacks coming in a second. But it's not often you have a superstar quarterback on a superstar deal and a top three roster. Nah, that don't happen. Near, damn near impossible. It's, it it sh- mathematically it should be impossible. Like that's how they set it up. And this and you have it. Y'all can't score. I I think I think it's it's it is a hairpin trigger in Philly. And I'm up. not counting y'all scoring 28 points against the fucking Cardinals. That's scoring. Get yeah, the fuck, fuck out of here. Hell no. <laughs> Don't care about that. All right, to the AFC. Right. That, we we long winded that. Uh, right, Ravens. Ravens' <laughs> biggest threat. Yeah. In the AFC. I I'm gonna still say the Chiefs. I'm gonna still say the Chiefs. I'm going to still say the Chiefs for the same reason. Although, you know, let me just get the four out. So, I'm Chiefs won. Okay. Once I, all right, I'll give you a list. It'll make sense when I, when I explain it. Chiefs won. Texans two. Dolphins. And then the Bills. If I had to do four. Okay. And all these teams have one thing in common. You are going to have to be ready to hoop on offense. And Texans at two, everybody's so confused. But watch the game. They played them already this year. They are a very, very good offense when C.J. Stroud plays. The Ravens have already struggled with them. And the head coach is an amazing defensive coach to try to slow them down a little bit. But to beat this team and to beat Lamar Jackson right now, your quarterbacks are going to have to be a star. Except if you have Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. <laughs> <laughs> but those other three teams, like I got the Bills on there. I think the Bills might not even make the playoffs. But in one game, if I got to roll the dice, fuck, I mean, fuck it. <laughs> thank Josh you. Allen, like, fuck it, bro. Thank I, yo, thank you. you're going to need a difference maker, a play maker. You're not going to beat them playing with Joe Flacco. It's not going to happen. Y'all would think me and Ish spoke every day the way, <laughs> the way we be locked in. So my list is the Bills. At one, the Browns at two. Uh, my bad. Bills at one, Chiefs at two, Browns at three, Miami at four. Okay. I have the Bills at one for that exact reason. Yep. You're not beating the Ravens without 330, 50 on the ground, three tubs. Right. You're not doing it. Nope. It has to look like that quarterback might be the best quarterback in the NFL that day. Yeah. Because that defense is so Good. Exactly. It's going to take an outrageous performance. The only reason I have the Browns on the list, because I see a lot of people are saying the Browns are the biggest threat, and they are not the biggest threat because you're not – Joe Flacco was not walking in there and sitting down stagnant in that pocket yeah, no, for no, four no, quarters no, 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 no. and throwing for 400 yards and two tucks. He's no, not doing that. No. The reason the Browns are uh, third on my list is because – of their defense and them being a division rival. Right. Three times they'll play this year. Uh, three That'll be the third time they would have played, and that defense knows Lamar better than anybody in right. the NFL can know Lamar. Facts. The Chiefs aren't too simply because of 15 and 87. No other reason. Yep. No, in their defense. 15, 87 in their defense. No other reason. I don't. Yeah. The reason the Chiefs aren't at one is because of their receivers. Yeah. I believe Patrick Mahomes is more likely to give you the Superman performance, but this year I don't think Patrick Mahomes can – Give the Superman performance because I think his receivers are so bad. <laughs> Niggas will drop it. <laughs> Niggas will just drop it. Right. And then Miami is self-explanatory. Yeah. You got you got Flash and uh, Quicksilver on the yeah. outside. So who cares? <laughs> like right. you can do whatever. You might you might just luck up. And that's the thing. And that's why I have Miami there. And a lot of people don't like talking about Miami as a real com- like competitor. Which I get. <laughs> which I one thousand percent agree. I don't think they're a a, a Super Bowl contender in Me the either. average no, sense. No. But in one game. 
Mm. Like, it's very easy. Like, oh, yeah, we called the right defense, and my corner slipped when Reed caught it. Like, exactly. <laughs> we are breaking down a tackle, and I just, exactly. I just fell the wrong way. The game and over. Waddle went 75. <laughs> like, and the, like, the unpredictableness mm-hmm. of it is so impressive. They was talking about – I think Eric Machine was talking about it where – it's kind of hard to judge the Dolphins because so many of their plays are like, oh, yeah, we threw this curl, and this is the best receiver alive. So it went 70 after. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. All right. It's just promise you we were going to get to the young quarterbacks. Let's get to the young quarterbacks in the college football playoff. This past Monday, Texas and, Tex- Texas and Washington play in a yeah. great game. And – Michigan and Alabama played in a great game as nice. well. Uh, college football playoff last year with the four teams. Next year is going to 12. A lot of conversation about if they got it right. We were out, so we never really got to get in yeah. that. I was coming in here to say they got it wrong, but it's not because – Florida State didn't get in. It's, it's because Georgia UGA. didn't get yeah. in. Georgia should have got in over. I understand why they did, and I understand you couldn't yeah. put them in because Texas beat Alabama and everyone lost conference trip. And I get it. Yeah. But Georgia was one of the four best teams. Everybody knows it. When you watch them play, you can tell 63-3 to three against a Power 5 conference championship. It's just fucking absurd. Yeah. Just absurd. I'm sorry, audience, for that little last part. I know I wasn't talking to the mic. That's on me. <laughs> <laughs> I... Don't we're not gonna dive into these games because that's not what we do. We don't do that with college football. Maybe yeah. this upcoming this upcoming season we'll have guests on to do that. Yeah. So look forward to that next year. But Joel Clatt, answer the DM. Come on, Joel. <laughs> Fuck. That's my dog. <laughs> and Colin, you too. <laughs> yeah. But y'all know we love quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Washington. Mr. Penix. Yep. Michael Penix. Put up one of them ones. Yeah, oh one yeah. of the performances. I was like, okay, that's a bad boy. That's a bad motherfucker. Yeah. Like, like, boy, he 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 yeah. looked like, oh, should he go top ten? Like niggas was on that game. Like, oh, that's a top ten drop pick. Niggas, fans of hey Steelers draft him. Bro. Falcons please draft him. Dog. Yo, should he go over Caleb? Like, yo, yeah, like that's crazy, crazy, crazy. That's like, crazy. Like, yo, it's Nigga getting crazy. Replied to my tweet. He better than Clay. <laughs> like, yeah. he getting crazy. Rightfully so, though. Yeah. I will say, when you perform like that, yeah. you deserve a little hyperbole. Right. Um, hyperbole, sorry. Uh, that's how I say it when I'm being funny. Um, <laughs> hyper, uh, hyperbole. So, looking at Drake, man, we've had this conversation, but a lot has changed it. Yeah. And it's only three quarterbacks coming out. We had Shifter Sanders in this conversation at first. Yeah. Looking at Drake May, Caleb Wilson, and Michael Penix, how are you ranking them? Yeah. Finally, this is the last time we'll do it. I swear. Yeah. Um, probably not. Probably why. Probably do it right before the draft. But yeah. <laughs> but well, we are in a special position because we talk about the draft sometimes. Yeah. But like with the Patriots having a top three pick, like we. Yeah, are, I know it matters to you right now. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. this is you know I had. I almost cried on Christmas because mm-hmm. the Patriots. <laughs> won. But yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. I almost broke down. <laughs> like, like, like I really, real deal. I almost broke down and cried. <laughs> But right now, as it stands for me, because we did this early in the year, and to our credit, because a lot of shows did not, we talked Michael Penix, and we had Michael Penix on the graphic. And, you know, we talked about how he's, you know, a little older, been hurt. But for me, still now, it's Caleb, knock, 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 May, and Penix. And for different reasons. I think Penix, like if we was playing Madden, like if I could turn injuries off, mm-hmm. like I ain't got to worry about mm-hmm. him getting hurt. Even with the the, the I don't want to say limited mobility because pocket mobility is amazing. Just not him being a super dual threat, he would be the second overall pick. If you could turn injuries off, he would be my second overall pick. Simply because I think, especially in the NFL, more than the NBA, you can see when dudes got. It. When you're drafting in the NBA, it's kind of different because college basketball sucks. It looks <laughs> nothing like the NBA. 35-second mm-hmm. shot clock. Everyone's playing zone. Team scores 70 points. You really don't like, oh, wow, Maxi, you're actually a 40-point scorer on any night in the right system. You can't Shea really see that. was averaging eight points in college. Some Literally. Some shit like that. Like, yeah. But with Penix running a pro-style offense against complicated defenses, you can see right now if Penix woke up and was a free agent, it'd be 20 teams that wanted him. And especially at his age, I'm watching the game like, and people killed us when we did the Caleb thing. But tell me right now, he's not better than Desmond Ritter. He's not better than Mason Rudolph right now. Like, there are several teams with quarterbacks. You telling me right now, put Penix on that team. They're not a better team. And 
you know, I'll let you talk more about the technical start side of the passing because I know you know, like, as a quarterback, much more of how he plays. The one thing I want to highlight is the the zip. And that's, and, you know, everyone's talking about how smooth it looks. You know, it's like a left-hand jump shooter. You know, everybody loves to jump yeah, shoot. I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. but the zip he puts on and sometimes takes completely off the passes is what's so important. Because what you'll see a lot is for some quarterbacks, everybody, you know, you got like three golf clubs. You got the, you know, I'm throwing it hard, I'm throwing it light, or, you know, I'm a loft it. Penix has every single, oh, yeah, I have to throw it right here, put this much on it, this much on it. Or sometimes I got to stand in there and rip it through a defense. And he ha- he's shown the ability to, on the fly, no, oh, yeah, I just got to. Just drop it in there. I, I've heard people, Joel Klatt, for one, describe it as he's a really good passer. It oh, has yeah. more so to do with not how he throws the ball, but yeah. how he passes yeah. in a football setting. I know how to throw the right pass right. in a split second. Hell yeah. Ranking quarterbacks, I'll start there. Caleb May and Penix is still my order. Yeah. Caleb, I really like. I, I do think now more than earlier in the college football season, I do think May and Caleb are a little bit closer. But yeah. the only reason I feel that way is because of Caleb's size. It's, right. That's the only reason. I think Caleb's size might be a little bit of an adjustment. And I also think his yeah. lack of his lack of NFL level speed. I yeah. think he might have that Josh, uh, that Zach Wilson, Johnny Menzel yeah. thing where he forget this ain't yeah. the SEC. My and nigga. I will say, I don't know what cameras they use. He looks small as hell on. He TV. looks small, but, but that's re- my issue. Yeah, he look. He's regular. He's like yeah. six something. Yeah, but like on college football, he looks small. Yeah, he look like five eight. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he does. He bro. look like Kyler on yes. those little college. Yes. I don't know what cameras they be using, but <laughs> somebody was like, "Yeah, he's he's about six something." I was like, "Really?" Yeah. yeah, so I think I think he is six one and a half, yeah. so basically six two with cleats on. Yeah, but that his size, his stature, his scares me. Jake Drake London's a little bit bigger. I think he's six three and a half, six four. Yeah, uh, Mac Penix is big as hell as well. I think Caleb has the best arm of the two. I yeah. think he's a better off platform thrower for sure, and yeah. I think he's better off the on the run, which all are proving to be very important in this NFL. Yeah. And it also not only is important coaches, and this isn't the 2090s anymore, coaches are starting to scheme you to be in those positions because yeah. it put, it puts such a stress on the defense right. when you're outside of the pocket and you're able to make For all sure. these crazy-ass throws. So Caleb is my number one. Drake May is my number two. And Penix is my number three simply because of his injury history and his age. He right. is At the time of the draft, he'll be 24. Right. That means when his second season starts, he'll be 25. Yeah. Like, that's a old as uh, starting quarterback right. and when he gets his first contract he's going to be 28 right like that's crazy so those are my only reasons i i've heard some people say he has a long throwing motion yeah. don't really think that's the issue it's not I, I see some people say, well, Washington is more so of a run and shoot offense. It's kind of it's kind of shallow or deep. It's yeah. really no intermediate. But I feel like, yo, this nigga is throwing twenty yard post on the money. I'm yeah. pretty sure he can throw a twelve yard dig. I'm not. It's the like the little me, stuff I see people complaining about. I'm not ultra worried yeah. about the injury and the age. Are really Let me ask you things. this because this is how I feel. If I as a Patriots fan, if Caleb goes one, I would rather them take Penix at two. Than Drake May. Okay, so this is kind of my philosophy when I'm drafting, when I'm thinking of a team drafting a quarterback. Yeah. After the, the best quarterback is gone, because only one team gets the number one pick. Yep. After the best quarterback is gone, that two through seven, yeah. those seven quarterbacks that'll get drafted, six quarterbacks, whatever, that'll get drafted. Do you go for the highest potential yeah. are the safest option. See, uh, listen. He, and yeah. to your point, I think Penix has more potential than May. Yep. But I think May is a safer bet. Right. I think May will come in and be 3,500, 3,800, yeah. 25 touchdowns, 15 interceptions. And for 10 years, he'll be that. Yeah. Similar to Matt Ryan, Justin Herbert. Right. I think that is what his – Ceiling is, which right. is again no problem. You put the perfect offense around him, great coach, he can win the Super Bowl. Penix, though, yeah. I think can be a top five quarterback. Yeah. He can have one of the best arms in football. He is not immobile. He can run with the ball. Right now, you're not. He's not going to do it a lot. 
But he, when he needs to get out of the pocket, and it's one of those Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl type plays yeah. where it's y'all forget the spot is one play, and I can get twenty yards here. Yeah. It's something like that. So very similar to Patrick Mahomes' mobility. Right. He's as you said, he's incredible in the pocket. He has great feet, great arm. I think his upside yeah. is as high, maybe as high as Caleb's is. And to that point, I would agree with you. Yeah. I might consider him drafting over May just because of his upside. Right. And I'm if I'm Bill Belichick and I'm the greatest football coach of all time, I feel like I can bring out the best in this Facts. Fella. I would I, I totally agree. I once you get to that pick, and I'm always this guy draft wise, give me the like, especially in a draft, take the guy you think is gonna end up being the best. I hate fit over talent mm -hmm. because Fit over talent, you can do that anywhere. We can go get mm -hmm. a fit player anywhere. Right. You're not going to be able to go get a superstar exactly. later. Exactly. That is probably my biggest thing. And like with Penix, he's going to be older, and he has the, the two surgeries, but like, man. I mean, bro, just tore his. ACL. Lamar, he's been hurt. Plenty, like, it getting hurt now. Feels so much different than it used to. Than it used to, where it's like, oh yeah, I mean, get rehab right, good doctors, we we'll back in six months, maybe. Look, bro, look, perfect example. Aaron Rodgers is fucking forty, yeah, and he is going to be starting next year, and no one's gonna bat an eye. Facts. I know he's Aaron Rodgers. I know what yeah. he is. What he is, but at forty years old. You tear your Achilles, yep. and week one the next year you're starting, and nobody batting an yep. eye. Like, yeah, he'll be okay. Right. That's how good technology has. Facts. Been. Like, like, uh. I forgot what the running back was for the Rams who ended up being Oh, Cam Akers. Cam Akers, yeah. There's so many, like, and that's the thing where, man, if you can get Penix, and this is why he's so, this is probably the most interested I'll ever be about, like, the pre-draft process, but if Penix is sliding because, oh, yeah, they red flagged him because his knee or just that in the third, it's going to be so sad watching him play. In San Francisco, <laughs> like I'm gonna be breaking down in like tears when, like they did with Lamar, a really good team, really good organization is gonna look at him with their second round pick and be like, man, do we want an outside linebacker or are we gonna swing on changing the next 15 years of this franchise? And like, bro, it's so many like competing teams too. If I'm Michael Penix. I want to go to two teams. Yeah. The Steelers. Yeah. Or the 49ers. Yep. Those are my two options. I think both of those are realistic because that's it shit. Now, he might throw for 400 in his playoff game and win the win the national championship and he his draft stock might rise and he might yeah, go facts. top 12. And it might yeah. not matter. But if he does fall and he falls to the Steelers yep. or he falls to San Francisco, watch out. Watch out. I would like to throw a third team in there. And this is a little weird because we don't know what's going to happen with their future as they are a playoff team. And, they, you know, their quarterback had MVP buzz. Mike McDaniel seems like the type of guy that watches college football. Mm -hmm. And Mike McDaniel looks like the type of guy that sees Michael Penix process the game amazingly mm -hmm. with a like, – like, really, if you just take a step back, Michael Penix is super to him. From every aspect, Tua hurt coming out of college <laughs> several times. Didn't know if Tua his, ever his played. His back was broken coming out of Dog, college. Dog, bro, back, hip. Like, people didn't know if he could play in college. Tua. Oh, with him. That's what it was. Yeah. It was his hip, yeah. Left-handed guy. Processes the game really well. Tua. Accurate as fuck. Accurate as hell. But the difference is, it's contract time for Tua. True. And if Miami comes out here round one and gets smashed like we think they would. And he throw for 170 yards yeah. in the pick. You're not going to pay Tua, so why don't you take a second? If he's available, like if he's dropping, use a second-round pick, pick Michael Penix, and then not only are you possibly upgrading a QV, now you're back on the rookie contract scale. Now you're back. It's like, man, we spent all this money on Tyreek. We may not. No, 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 no. Now instead of your quarterback being, which was, and I had to explain this to this nigga on Twitter, instead of your quarterback being, 250 million <coughs> for five years. 
he's 40 million for five years, which is a real thing. That is a that is the real difference between a rookie quarterback and a superstar quarterback. Like Lamar got two what two fifty? Two fifty. Yeah. Stroud is on a forty million dollar deal, total. <laughs> like that is why teams are doing it this way. So I think especially this draft because even even outside Penix, Jaden Daniels, JJ McCarthy, any of these teams that need a quick reset button, you have to. Hey, if you drop J.J. McCarthy or Bo Nix to reset your yeah, franchise, please. you will be resetting and your lastly, franchise uh, in two more years. And, and, you know, listen, Drake May, you may be an amazing quarterback. As a Patriots fan, I don't want an ACC quarterback. I don't – you know, I got to see it. I, I won't say he won't be good, but, fam, I will – man. It's been Be one, careful. It's been one, two, Deshaun and Lamar, and those yeah. are anomalies. At Matt Ryan. It depends how you feel about Matt Ryan. Um, the Boston ACC College. in 2008 was a lot better. That's true. That's <laughs> definitely true. <laughs> and I, I, I don't know if I've ever told you this, but I saw Matt Ryan play in college in person. Really? Before I knew who Matt Ryan was. Yeah. I went to that Boston College Georgia Tech game with my dad when we, uh, when Matt Ryan came to town, yeah. and he looked different. That's like right. yeah. it was like I no, was he 10. was crazy and he was crazy I was, college. I was ten years old, yeah. and me and my dad were in the stands. Like, who the fuck? No, no he was crazy. Thing? He was on the cover of NCAA. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like he was, he was ripping yeah. shit. Yeah. Like him. it looked like an NFL quarterback. They talked about field. that coming out of the draft. Like they said when he, like when he was doing his uh, mm-hmm. the combine. Shit, he mm-hmm. said when Matt Ryan hit the back foot of his post, it looks different at the combine. Yeah, and that's yeah. how NFL. Yeah. that's how NFL quarterbacks look. Mm-hmm. We'll see Drake. And Matt Ryan came in as a rookie and got to it. Like, yeah, Matt no, Ryan would change. Facts. Matt Ryan had the city height for a little bit because yeah. that was in between where Matt Schaub and it was one other ass quarterback. They was trying yeah. to replace Vic and they finally got one. But, but let's move on to something a little bit more light, happy. Uh, sorry for the women. Um, that's I call the football to scare the hoes talk. Facts. Uh, <laughs> so Definitely scare the hoes talk. Let's get into some stuff for the women. Shout out to the beautiful women, especially of Please, Atlanta. Yeah. Um, we love you so yeah. much. You're amazing, and I couldn't do this without you. 2023, a beautiful year in music. We have things coming for you, so I don't want to just give out all of our stuff. But I do want to ask you, Ish, what were some of your just standout projects? Not necessarily your album of the year and all of that good shit. Just some shit that like meant shit to you, meant a lot to you. Not necessarily the best piece of work. Just it could be an album with four good songs you right. really like on it. Just what were what were you I really have to feeling? see when this released, but I. Will actually released a live edition of one of her of of her last album. Okay, okay. And I really, really I like that. Albums. It's crazy. Okay, it, I got it. It's really that. crazy. I gotta that. Um, definitely that album. Um, James Blake album. You told me about that one. James Blake that. album was crazy. I'm gonna say that one. That would be my highlight. Where it's like, wow. Okay. Very crazy. So I have two, and since it stayed away from rap, I'll stay away from rap. I have two away from rap. And one is embarrassing, and I don't want to say it, and I'm waiting for our guest to get here so she can say it. Um, the second one is BJ Chica- uh, BJ the Chicago Kid uh, okay. with Gravy. I came in here and that stuff. I heard the album one time and told it, it's like, please go listen to it. Yeah, hell like, yeah. This shit is fire. As I said, it's Silk Sonic on steroids. Yeah. Very just part. It, it's something for every moment. If you just with your girl on a date night, if you at a party, you at a kickback. Yeah, you just vibing. you in H and M. Like it's so, it's literally something for everything yeah. on there. And I think sonically, it just it met everything you're looking for with an album. It was it was it wasn't too long. It was it was cohesive. Yeah. It his voice is amazing, amazing and soothing. It it was it took you through like a it, it made you stop and really just want to listen because yeah. I was doing something when I started listening to the album and I stopped doing what I was yeah, doing you to told just me that. sit yeah. down and listen to that bitch yeah. like it's really really good music but the second album that I'm waiting on uh, Lesser Face to say <laughs> is <laughs> Endless Summer Vacation by Miley Cyrus okay um, okay l- look yo. Um, and this has nothing to do with my girl. Um, I will say I found this album. Yeah. Um, 
I, I grew up with Miley Cyrus. Like, yeah. so I fuck with Miley nah, Cyrus. No, it's, it's like, a lot of niggas Han- not going bad for man with Miley Cyrus. Hannah Montana is yeah. my one of my favorite Disney shows. Yeah. Party in the USA is forever a 2010 oh. pop bop. Like, you can put that bitch on anywhere yeah. with some niggas that are between 22 yeah. and 30, and they gonna sing that bitch Bro. like it's just, uh, some niggas. Oh, God. Um, so I the fuck climb. With the climb. Play with me if you want to. Hey, Play with me if you want to. Dog. I'm saying, all my niggas are going bad for bad with Miley. Bro. Come on, dog. Come on, man. Listen, it's always gonna be another mountain. I'm gonna always wanna make that bitch move, gang. Come on, Come on son. <laughs> let's get let's get to it, bro. Uh, and then she can rap too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> listen, listen. The two three shit. <laughs> Hey, shout out Mike Will. Hey, shout you out Mike. Me. Hey, shout out Miley Cyrus. Now, however, I that album seriously is yeah, it's phenomenal. If we was on Patreon, I would tell Taylor to come in here and talk about how much she likes it. But <laughs> that album is yeah. phenomenal, top to bottom. It's like a 35, 38 minute album, and I'm gonna tell you how I ended up listening to the album, bro. So, you know, Disney Plus, I got money, so I got mm-hmm. Disney Plus subscription, and I saw. That's because y'all subscribe, by the way. Thank you. You feel me? Please subscribe. <laughs> I, I I saw Miley Cyrus was doing like a live performance for Disney Plus. It's called. It was like a. It was called the pre summer vacation and blah blah blah. Yeah. It, she performed her whole album. Um, she performed her whole album just at her house in her backyard. Oh, that's it was hard. fire. That's a flex. Yo. I and it was like and then she, after every like two or three songs she would stop and talk about the songs and yeah. what they meant so you really got to hear the album. I put this on on the middle of the Saturday when me and Taylor was cleaning the apartment, and by the middle of the bitch I'm sitting down like oh oh she's cooking oh she is fucking cooking it was <laughs> yeah. flowers it was flowers the one that did it for me Man. flowers and Jada every a lot most people have heard flowers in some form of capacity because yeah. it's it's been like in stores and all of that shit but. The demo version of the flowers. She was talking about how in the demo, it's more for, for her. She prefers to listen to the demo because you can feel how her emotion build in the hook yeah. as the song progresses. And when you listen to the lyrics, you see why her emotions is building. Yeah. And I said, "Oh, this bitch loves music for yeah, real." Facts. And then I figured out she writes all her own music. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Other yeah. than like her mega mega pop hits, yeah. Miley Cyrus writes all her own music. Right. Didn't know that. So I said, well, fuck. I guess I got to go listen to this album. It came out that Friday. And ever since then, I haven't turned the album off. Like, yeah. No, I, I, f- I, I, I fuck with Miley Cyrus. I, I will not lie about that. That album is fun. phenomenal. I wasn't supposed to talk five for five yeah. minutes about Miley Cyrus. Or my no, bad. but hey, <laughs> shit, fuck it. But that album is phenomenal. Any uh, any songs or anything that really stood out? I do want to throw in an album that we didn't talk about on here that I do say mm. the last four, the last week of 2023, I've had on repeat no, like, and it's Ganger. By V's. Fuck, ish. Don't make me listen to that. I'm, listen, I'm not going to lie, Daniel. I thought he was one of the, like, you know, the new some of the newer rap niggas. They Bro, be, like, just, offbeat and shit. I can't do it. He's not like that on every song, though, apparently. Oh. And it's a couple of them shit. Bro, I was like, because you know I be streaming, so sometimes I'll just play a bunch of music just to have it on in the background. So um, I listened to Ganger. I was fucking with it. So I went to Tidal and just put on his artist station just to shuffle through him. And I'm listening. I'm like, oh, he going crazy. And then halfway through the song, I'm like, nigga, this is the Law and Order soundtrack? And it's the dun 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 dun. And I don't know. He has so many crazy songs. He has so many crazy songs. And to you don't like this? Nigga, boring niggas to death. I'm not going to lie. He is boring niggas to death, bro. I've heard nothing but good things. His about bar, it's, it's really, I'm telling you, bro. Cause, and I really stumbled into it. I really stumbled into it. I was like, yeah, let me try to listen to it. Mm-hmm. That nigga is crazy. Bro, a couple people, Javante told me to listen to him because Javante don't like love rap music the way we yeah. do, but he love music. So yeah. he'll appreciate some shit. So when he told me to listen to some rap shit, I know it's something catchy or something to read. Yeah. Tyrone, Roby. Like it's a couple of people trying to get me to listen to it, and I just won't do it because yeah. like that whole like that it's a style now to like kind of get on those Detroit beats. Yeah, and, like and it's a little all yeah, mm-hmm. it's a little style now. Caribou is kind of doing it with Yachty. Shout um, out, listen, I, ooh, yeah, ooh. shout out Caribou. Them bo- they going crazy. Too. I'm listen. I can't, good, I'm not gonna talk about Caribou on here because this is YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> like, and there's certain things that are gonna demonetize. We can't say. 
But that's a good woman that's right there. That's a good woman for sure. Shout out to Caribou. So, Damn. yeah, that, that style it just isn't for me. But yeah. I'm going to tap in. You told me you I listen to you when you get recommendations. Duh, hey, so I'll tap in the game. He, like, yo, like, man, yeah, I went to uh, my job's paying for, like, uh, like a bunch of crazy, like, this crazy gym pass. Mm-hmm. And I was listening. I was working out with that shit. I was like, man, this nigga's going crazy. He's going crazy, like, bro. He's going I crazy. I fuck with it. Okay, yeah. nice. So I don't have any rap albums really to shout out. I think every rap album I liked, I shouted out when it came out Facts. because I listen to rap albums the night they come out like a crazy person. Yeah. I can't help it. <laughs> uh, so all of the ones I mentioned last year, Set It Off for Offset, I like that album a yeah. lot. Uh, Mike. Michael with Michael. Killer Mike. Yep. I love that album and Gunna album, A Gift and a Curse. I love yeah. those are the only two albums I love from last year. Nice. I really, really like Collie Grove 2 and For All the Dogs and Set It Off. I really, really like those albums. I really, really like West Side Gun albums. Those yeah. will be my like, my six like really good projects. Nice. And I'm missing one other album in that. I can't, don't really matter right now. Um, but also, some like For All the Dogs, uh, oh. Scary Hours. I'll yes. throw that in there. Yes, yes. And then. Uh, Raw Wave, Raw Wave. I oh, want to, yeah. I want to give him some shit love. Uh, oh, yeah. I like Raw Wave. This is the first album though I listened to front to back all year. Like yeah. this is good fucking music, bro. Like Hell, he yeah. is. I think it's a. People like to. Uh, what's the right word? People like to nitpick, nitpick something yeah. they don't understand, Facts. and. Raw Wave is somebody I don't think a lot of people really understand. They don't understand that right. this is a this is a feeling. This yeah. music is for feeling. It's right. not for your oh well he's a little off key or oh yeah. I would have said this yeah. or oh why is he so sad? Mm-hmm. This is music made to pe- for people to feel. Right. Raw Wave just got off a sold out arena tour. Uh, no, right, listen, nigga? listen, they feeling that shit, bro. You go now, y'all know I'm the concert dude. I go look at tickets. But let me tell you, let me tell okay, let me tell you, let me tell you. <laughs> my yes. niece, my niece Yo. said, my niece said I, I was I was telling her I went to Drake. I was mm-hmm. showing her the pictures. I, cause my, I talked to my mom about it. She said, My birthday coming up, I want to go see Raw Wave. I said, okay. You know, she's she's in she's second year high school, third okay. year high school. 16. So yeah, yeah, I was like, you know what? Nice. I was gonna concert that time. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, I'll look at it for real. Mm-hmm. I'll for real look at it. Look at the tickets. Fam, nigga, the tickets to get in the door at Rod Wave was like 180 for the 250. Bro, I was like, I told my sister, I said, time for Nelly to get a job. <laughs> <laughs> you starting to watch it? That's way too Dude, expensive. No, bro. sorry. Bro, niggas is feeling that shit. Niggas bro. is feeling niggas that is shit. Niggas is feeling that so, shit, bro. That is my point with Rod yeah. is that he understands how to provoke emotion out of you, right. how to pull emotion, how to pull feeling out of you. And he's talking to the trenches, and the trenches feel him. Yeah. But it's some people, it's some white folks, it's some regular niggas yeah. that still feel that music, regular suburban hey, life people. sad. Like, life be sad regardless. Niggas like, why raw wave sad? Y'all niggas looked around. It's sad as fuck outside Come right on, now. dog. It's like, nothing to be happy about right, right now. Let's be real. That nigga from Florida. Yeah. There's no telling what he saw. Oh. So... so I just I wanted to give that shout out to Rod Wave and anybody else am I missing? Um, I dropped a project that year. This you year. Dropped that was project. Cool, Tyco Bain dropped a project. Uh, Tyco Bain dropped the project. Shout yeah. out to both of them. Um, um, who else? Who else? Like I'm just trying to make. I don't want to miss nobody. Uh, oh Nikki, I like Nikki album a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, that's just not my my target audience, but I do like yeah. Nikki album a lot. I think it was very very needed. Um. Yeah, no, I'm looking. I'm not going to tell y'all what I'm looking at and why I don't like it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> no siree, that's it. Um, <laughs> no, I think that's it. That's it. So, yeah, shout out to music. I, yeah. But of last year, we'll get more into that next episode. But I do want to ask, this, this is a new year, new beginning and all this. It's, and rap was in an awful place last year. Let's just, just call it what yeah. it is. Um, as I said, Kip, Michael and Giff and the Curse are probably the only two. And I would I would throw a Pray for Paris. Uh, Pray for Paris. West Side Guns album was phenomenal. It was just yeah. too long. But I can live with that because that's what he does. Right. So those are the, like the only three albums that were like great albums. Yeah. Um, Drake. And like I said, Drake, Collie Grove, Offset, Don Tolliver, yeah. uh, somebody who I missed. Oh, oh, Utopia. I, le- I super oh, like Utopia. Utopia came out. Utopia came, yeah. Utopia came out. I would throw that in the good album. Yeah. It wasn't great, right. but it was good. Facts. Um, so just a lot of music that 
we're looking at from these artists like oh this it's good but it could be right. better it's more so like we're travis and we don't have any travis music so we're gonna listen to you right Utopia. you're drake we haven't heard no drake music in a minute so we're gonna listen to this drake album. Right. but in 2024 and i will say we can look at 2025 as well where do you see rap going as a genre and i asked you this question a few months ago and i'm just really wondering if your answer has changed because i mean and when i look at rap i don't see any i think we're in a scary position because we don't have nobody to pass a torch to. I think <laughs> rap and the NBA are in a very similar position where they're not really sure who the next face is. Yeah. We know we have Braun, Steph, and KD as the three main faces. Yeah. Right now, we know we have Drake, Kendrick, and Cole, or Drake, Kendrick, and Future, Drake, Kendrick, and Tyler, Drake, Cole, and however you want to frame it. We know right. we frame it. We know we got these four or five artists that define the 2010 and so on. Right. But we're looking at Baby, and he dropped in a year and a half, and his last album wasn't received well. His yeah. new two new snippets weren't received well. Nice. We're looking at Gunna, and he is incredible, but the yeah. industry hates him. Yeah, we don't know what's so going on. So yeah. who knows how that'll be really – can he really be the biggest rapper in the right. world if everybody hates him and he can't go nowhere? Right. Um, Travis, I think, is a more so a 2010s artist, and I think Travis has hit a has hit a level to where he doesn't – He's more a pop artist than he right. is a rap artist, and he treats he carries himself as that way. Right. Yeah. Um. So I wouldn't see he's here to pass a torch like we were saying in 2018, 2019. Yeah. And that leaves me with Thug, but Thug is in jail, and I think if Thug, I, I, I've said this multiple times, if Thug was not incarcerated, he would be the next guy, and yeah. I think he would be dropping music to prove that. But I don't think we soon. have soon. I pray to God. I don't um shout out to my boy uh on trial today. That shit had me like crying all day. I <laughs> but <laughs> said, who was it? You want me to name everybody? <laughs> but I said, you want me to name everybody? <laughs> the nigga said, Yeah, my neighbor, my nephew, dog. <laughs> Are you gonna tell me to stop? Like <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm telling you, bro. Listen, D, yeah. you know, it's not like the NFL. I can't wait till they fire that DA in Atlanta. Bro, they are what? going to fire your stupid oh ass for God. this. She looks, she looks, well, hold, on, hold on, let me fix it. <laughs> <laughs> boy. She having a fourth quarter collapse. Come right on now. now. Come on she now. She needed another time out. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> Let's be real about the situation. It's God. Boy, that, boy, I almost called her out her name. She is stupid. Uh, what <laughs> were you thinking? You can hear it in her question. She don't know what she's doing. <laughs> You can hear it. Bro, like, like, if y'all don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about the YSL trial. If you want to yeah. follow it, just go on Twitter and type it in. It's threads all over the place yeah. following it. Today, they had a witness on the stance, and the questions you, like you said, like, you can tell, like, she's stuck. Yeah. Like, she, because these, they're not taking her serious, because you can tell, like, this isn't, like, she doesn't have a real case. Yeah. It feels like that. Right. At first, I thought she did. She had a witness out of the way. I was yeah. like, oh, shit, this might get bad for my boy. But as you see, and nobody, they took him forever to find a jury. Yep. The witnesses keep falling off. The judge is mad at him. Yeah, the no, they've already had to replace uh, one or more of the jurors uh, from that. But I, we actually should do this on the show. I don't know why I haven't done this before, but like a quick YSL trial update. Um, so right now, the biggest thing that has become apparent, at least for me, a little bit. Okay, actually, let me give background for the audience because uh, I don't talk about my personal life much. I am four years in of comp mock trial plus a year of college mock trial have won several mock trial awards of course hold your applause thank you thank you <laughs> da, da, da. but uh so i am like, like not a lawyer <laughs> like <laughs> i'm big myself to tell you i'm not a lawyer <laughs> but i know a little more of course than the average person and what you're seeing in the ysl prosecution right now is that the witnesses and the defense and the prosecution know they do not have a case unless Everyone around Thug is going to crumble. And as of now, nobody has. So we'll see how it plays out. But if you you know, if this was a football game and we're like, hey, trying to give you guys a score, it's 14-3 YSL right now. <laughs> yeah. Going in the half. Type shit. Type like, shit. It's not going bad. Any court case where the first day the judge is upset at you that the court case is going wrong, it, it's a problem. Facts. <laughs> So, shout out to Thug, Free Thug. We love you. That's my favorite rapper. Y'all know how I feel about that dude, man. Free Jeff, for real, for real. But that brings us back to what I was saying with just there's nobody to really to take the torch for raps. As I said, similar to the NBA, there's nobody to take the torch. And we're looking at Drake like, is he going? 
like, is he like LeBron? Like, is he just gonna keep yeah. releasing music? It's that's like good that, enough. It's like, yo, we are on Drake's fifteen studio album. Yeah, and he like, did three hundred k first week again. Like, okay, are we there? Is that the point? Is Cole gonna have? Because Cole has been on fire since yeah. the, since right before since that feature run started when he tweeted, "I'm finna start uh, working with other artists." Send yeah, me send beats. beats. Yeah, that. First feature, I think a lot was the first feature that yeah. came from that. Since then, Cole been on fire. Yeah. Including the off season. The off season was a nine out of ten, eight and a half out of ten album, really good fucking project. Yeah. Like, so is he coming here for the with the fall off and save it and rap? I don't think so. I think it's gonna be a great album. I think right. it's gonna go sell three, four hundred for me. Yeah. But I don't think it's what rap needs. What I think rap needs is Lil Baby. To drop a Carter three, yeah. They need Gunna to drop um, a graduation. They yeah. need a uh, Thug to get out and drop a Wash the Throne. They need something that right. will stand the test of time. Because right now, I don't hear any yeah. timeless music. I hear a few timeless songs in between yeah. here and there, but I don't hear a timeless. Album. Facts. I don't hear an album that people cut on, and within two or three days, it's on every platform. Right. Everybody has heard it. You're walking in a barbershop, they're talking about it. You're driving down the street, and you hear it playing. You in the club, and it's playing. Yeah. You on, you went watching a basketball game, and it's playing and going in the commercial. And then you start seeing them on Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy right. Fallon, Drink Champs, Joe Budden. I haven't seen that, yeah. and that scares me for the state of rap. Does it scare you, or do you think it's just where music is going so, and there will not be that anymore? So I think it's different, and I think what you said there is correct, but in like for a certain reason. I think now so much of an artist's career is more organically tied to your fans that we won't see as many people fall off, but the way they bubble up is different now. Where they're not gonna take the same path, but one day you just look up and Rod Wave finished a studio tour, that's a, a stadium tour, because that's really how it's happened. Where the guys we were looking towards, like yeah, they're bubbling, but people whose fans are carrying them are becoming superstars now because it's not a label that's like, all right, you're gonna co cover Rolling Stones, you're gonna be on this album, we're gonna put you in these interviews, and then every step you're gonna get a little closer. And because you're on this label deal, you're gonna drop an album every year. It's different now where so many artists are 100% through their fans that you kind of just look up and then, oh, they're here unless you're a fan of them. Mm -hmm. And I think it's going to be a couple. I really do. I think it'll be three or four artists next year that are going to really take a big step forward. And who are they? I think Rod Wave will be one of them for sure. Mm -hmm. Gunner's going to be one for sure. Mm -hmm. I think Baby Keem's going to be one. Okay. And I think V's. Okay. And I think and the and those are my four and those are there and I know you're looking at this like wow those are a lot of different people that is the point they are all little different sections of where hip hop is moving right now and I think Gunna is gonna be the front of that I think Gunna is gonna be the biggest I think he's gonna be the most popular and the problem that we have and you mentioned it was man everybody in the industry hates Gunna but the difference is when you're the biggest in the industry doesn't matter. Because everybody hated Drake. And I think Gunn is in a very interesting position where you look around the last two, three years, Gunna, you can confidently say, oh, yeah, Gunna's been making the best music out for the last two studio albums. Like, you take anybody last two albums, you can put them next to Gunna's. And you could keep going. And I really think this year he, true. he dropped a gift and a curse. That's true. He has all the biggest rappers, future Thug, well, we'll see what Thug, but actually, you know, Young Thug Dad talked about it, and they seem to be on good terms. Future, Thug, like all the artists that are going to need to eat Drake, they've eaten with Gunna. Some of their biggest songs are with Gunna, and I think that trend is going to hold. He dropped really early last year. I wouldn't be surprised if March, April, right when it gets warm, get a Gunna out. Back. Yeah. All right. I love that answer. It brings me real hope. You feeling that positive, positive oh, about Gunner? I almost forgot. 
But your your point about Drake being mm-hmm. LeBron, I one thousand percent think so. I think right now where we are in rap, where like being a rapper kind of is like the back end of you being a rapper. Really, like you're really a celebrity who has these endorsements and does these things. Oh, and I rap. I think Drake will be Drake until like he really retires. Okay. Same way, like 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 think about it. If Wayne wasn't in label trouble, every two years he's probably doing three hundred k. Every two years, he's probably doing 300K. Yeah. And the only reason, like, for the artists from our side, they just had it's really true. interesting situations. Kanye was a little crazy. He wasn't going to keep doing it. Hove had been rapping way longer than everybody else, so it was only natural he stopped. And Wayne literally couldn't have dropped music. But, like, if Wayne was still just, you know, cash if money. If the Carter good, 5 had came out in 2013. Yeah. And the Carter 6 came out in 2016. Yeah, yeah. literally, we'd be. You're right. Yeah. And I You're think right. that's I think that gap is is just natural from those specific yeah. artists. And I think I'm being unfair. I think I'm being sexist in this. I have not mentioned the women because yeah. the women have Meg Lotto. Right. Uh, they are at the for- Cardi. Meg Lotto and Cardi at the forefront. Nikki is at Legacy Act in my opinion at yeah. this point. So both they're those three are the forefront, and you have Sexy Red, Glorilla, right. um, um, Flo Millie coming up behind them. So I do want to give Caribou. a Caribou. Caribou. Yeah. I do want to give a shout out to the women because they have they really have been dropping the best of the rap music. Yeah. I think it's. The guys, it's a it's a male dominated sport. Right. So when the guys drop, it's more in your face. But consistent wise, it's yeah. been the women. The right. women have dropped great projects. Have yeah. had the summer singles. Have had the winter singles. Yeah. They've been going crazy. Lotto had a song with Mariah Carey. Like yeah. like they've been going crazy. So I can't right. I can't just sit here and act like rap is in the worst place it's ever been in yeah. when these women are going crazy. So I do I cannot be uh, I would be. Uh, ignorant to not mention them and I also wanted to bring that up because when you talk about what Wayne could have been doing and what Drake is doing with Kanye well if he was to be dropping music would be doing that's the same thing for Nicki Nicki just dropped 300k number one album everywhere fucking broke all the records if Nicki had dropped in 2018 she dropped in 2018 she had dropped in 2020 2021 this year like it would look I guess the landscape would look different so I guess the the theatrics behind the scenes, the dramatics behind the scenes does have a big effect yeah. on that. But I agree with you. I do think Drake is just going to keep being Drake. I yeah. think Drake is addicted to making music. I think he's addicted yeah. to the spotlight. I think he's addicted to being the biggest, kind of like LeBron yeah. is. I, I think it's an it's a healthy addiction of yeah. like, let me see how long I can be this great. You're addicted to greatness, for sure. Mm-hmm. And I think the only name I miss from that, of course, is Playboy Cardi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't count him in this, though, because he's not rap. Like yeah. he is a rap, he's it's rap, but it's not traditional rap. Right. I am talking about I'm gonna get on yeah. a bar and I'm a rap, Fact. not this yeah. different, yeah. different lane because that's that's different. Like yes, that's important, right. but I kind of think to sum this conversation up, it's going in a it's going in a place where it's something for everybody. Yeah, and I think that's scary right. for some people like me who grew up with it a certain way for yeah. the older people but for the younger people that's all they know right now yeah. and the youth dictates what music is doing facts. just that's just facts the yeah. youth dictates where music is going to go where it's headed what it sounds like and because of that the youth have a wide array of mm-hmm. what they love yeah. playboy cardi yep drake rod or rod wave yep like come on now like yep. those are like the youth and then you got ESTG. We didn't mention Young Boy. Young Boy is a different animal though because he can't re- like he can't move around for real. Yeah. If Young Boy can move around for real, we might right. be having a different conversation. Seriously. Yeah. But since he can't, and if Young Boy had been able to move around, like had never gotten in trouble, and he's been able to move around since um all of the uh losing, uh, what was it? What's my song? Oh my God, no! Oh my mom, I'm so sorry. I, I, it's oh yeah, I know what you're about. Yeah. Fuck, I love that song so much. Yeah. I cannot think of the name of the song, but. Uh, since that song came out, I like it would be a different conversation. He probably would be the biggest rapper in the world right yeah. now, but despite, because of his situation. But I do think rap is headed in the place where it might be just something for everybody. So it's not necessarily three or four guys we're looking at as the biggest, like they're carrying the torch. It's just you know all of these niggas is relatively big, and they all gonna sell two hundred k. Right. And music will never feel as timeless as it is because it's just we're out of that phase. Like yeah. we might just be out of that phase where music is not going to feel that, that real soul and that real yeah. feel like you get when you cut on, um, late registration. Like you I get will what- say 
and I, and I was having this conversation about basketball when I was talking about Wimby, one of my friends. But I I think we will, but I think they'll be different. Okay. And and I was telling, and we were talking about how like LeBron and Wimby, like their prospects or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was saying, well, the next LeBron we got, but we didn't know. Like, like it's really like every it's gonna look different in a way. Like when we were think when we when I was watching Tom Brady, I never thought that next guy was like Mahomes or Lamar. When I was like when I was watching LeBron, Kobe, Steph, I never thought the next guy would look like Jokic or Giannis or Luka. That, or or Luka. Yeah. Like it's gonna keep changing, and that's why I really think. And I'm not even a huge Rod Wave guy, but Somebody like Rod Wave or Keem, we are gonna look up, and and, and I would, I would really sound the alarm on Rod Wave because we're gonna look up and we're gonna be a little we're gonna be a little older, and Rod Wave is gonna be doing four hundred k first week, and it is gonna be a little different, but he like the next guy, it's not gonna be like oh he made a graduation because before they made a graduation there wasn't one like the guy Kaye was replacing. They hadn't made a graduation. The guy Wayne and Hove, they were they didn't say, Oh yeah, I'm gonna make rock the bells like oh no 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 no. They just were so fire that they were the first of them. So I think whenever whoever's gonna break through that wall first, whether it is gunning this year, Rod Wave, it could be Drake finally with his first classic, it could be Baby Keem, we could get a Kendrick album. It's a lot of things that could happen, but I think when it hits, oh well, yeah, this is it. Because gotcha. that's really how it goes. Gotcha. Whether you when you look up one day, you're like, Jesus fucking guys, like this shit is crazy. Like, yeah. like the first time we heard, um, oh, fuck, the first time I heard dropping jewels, I was like, yep, it's over. Like it's it's it. Like this is it. This is what the best rapper in the world feels like. So punk was the album, for yeah. Me. Because Kanye West had dropped. I think punk got overshadowed because 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 of Donda yeah. and Kanye. It's Kanye, yeah. And and not only is Kanye Kanye, Kanye yeah. Donda was a theatric event, right? For two months, and it had the other biggest rapper in the world tied to it with the beef yes. and shit. Yes, yeah. and then on top of that, every rapper you like is on the album, Fact. including Young Thug. So, so I but I do think punk didn't get necessarily the recognition it deserved and. The 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 uh just the recognition of Thug being the best are one of the best, and I think that is due to two reasons. One, the people that grew up young Thug kind of are off of his new sound. Yeah, they kind of want the trenches Thug back, but that's yeah. not what he's doing. That's the one reason, and the second reason is. The Donda situation. That was yeah. the second reason. Uh, the Donda situation. So I think because of those two reasons, yeah. you didn't get to hear Punk. But I, I do think Punk yeah. is one of those albums that you cut on and you're like, oh, yeah. Oh. This is special. Because I listened to Punk all the way through two yeah. months ago. And it's huh. still like that. Dog, like, it, is it's a, it is an amazing Punk. album. It's so good. So I, I love that point, bro, yeah. of like, well... You're not gonna know because like we didn't know. Like yeah. it wasn't no graduation. It wasn't no it wasn't no uh blueprint one yeah. out. Like it was just and, and then and, it was. And and to wrap it <laughs> with basketball, that was my point. Like, if you were to try to tell a nigga who was watching J- Magic Johnson play mm-hmm. that t- thirty years later is gonna be a nigga <laughs> bigger than him, <laughs> faster than him, and that plays better in every way, they look at <laughs> you sideways. Like, like, like nigga, this can't get no better than him. He's yeah, same bro, point like, guard. Like, I, yeah, and we're right. you know we're looking for this, but sometimes it like 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 when Braun was cut, like when Braun was in high school, mm-hmm. like niggas was looking for the next great big man. Yeah. That's true. And, and when Wimby was coming out, that's true. Everybody was looking for the next great guard. That's when true. Lamar was coming out, everybody was looking for the next great Brady. Hey man, you that's are, why it's so different. Damn, that's a good point. That's a great point, bro. Yeah, and like, like, and, and one more last comparison. <laughs> I was telling, like, I was, it's funny. I reference so many other conversations, but <laughs> my D and my dad were mm-hmm. like talking about college football, and right. we were talking about Caleb. And I was like, five years ago, he wouldn't be the first pick in the draft. Mm-hmm. He wouldn't be. You're right. You're because Mahomes was Caleb Williams at Texas. State. Yes, he was. And people looked at it like you can't win that way. Yes, he. Yeah. It, yeah. So it takes that. It takes that one, mm-hmm. and it'll change. Every, like it. Like if. Like if this was ten years ago, this is a no doubt Drake May first pick draft. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Second. Maybe Penix too. Se- Penix second. Joe Alt left tackle. That's what. That's yep. how, that's how it will go. Yeah. But no, like in the in the in like the way things are moving, it'll be so different. That's why we'll love it so much. I 
I love that, bro. Yeah, yeah you, you explained that very well. I think the last thing I will say selfishly, and not yeah. even selfishly, just like the music lover in me, I'm looking yeah. for that project. Right. And I'm, I want it. Like, yeah. I know... I think it's gonna be gonna. I, I agree you, yeah. with you. I, I didn't get to say that. Yeah. I I agree. I think yeah. it's gonna be gonna. I think gonna's gonna drop between March and July yep. and shut shit down. Oh yeah, it's gonna have two or three songs this summer. Yes, uh, it's gonna have some joy. Songs, yes, bro. because this year it couldn't have been done because niggas was still trying to figure out like, all right, are we listening to gonna? Can it yeah. be played? How are we gonna move? How and but once he dropped the perfect yeah. album, sold out show in New York, sold out show in L.A. He did the uh, uh, song with the uh, African artist. Yeah. So, like he's been killing. Shit. So I think he is at the moment, like he is in the moment where, all right, uh, he needs a feature. He needs a yeah. good fucking feature. I don't know if anybody will give it to him, but he needs a good fucking feature on with the song with the woman, yeah. and then a good fucking feature on a song with the man. Very yeah. different vibes, um, some summer shit, and then a perfect album. And yeah, Gunna is that place. Yeah, I was that when we talked about it on here, we didn't know the next steps for Gunna, but that New York and LA show. I sh- that seeing that seeing them two them two markets come out and support him but, like that was like okay bet and like that was the concert of the year for a lot of people. Oh, oh no, sorry. so for like a lot of people that New York and L A those shows like that was concert of the year. Like mm-hmm. I was watching the clips on Twitter. There's not, and I will say this because you know what we don't say this often, and I'm glad we don't say this often. But I love Atlanta because very rarely do I wish I was in another city. Right. That was the one time where I was like, fuck, you couldn't have come to yeah, Atlanta. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I was watching that <laughs> That's shit. That's factual. And then they did the colors green room and dropped the mic so he mm-hmm. could do top off. Yeah. I was like, he gets it, bro. He gets it. That's special. Like, the crowd, the niggas who went, ain't trying to hear nothing about them tweets y'all niggas talking about. Bro, come on now. Uh, and I know some, not know somebody, but Ice was at the show in the Joe Bum podcast, yeah. and he came back and talked about it. He was like, that bitch was rocking. Yeah. Like, like rocking. <laughs> like, so. Because Gunna got hits, bro. Gunna got real hits, bro. Yeah. Gunna got hits that, that you feel, too. Like, yeah. And Gunna got hits that feel good. You know how oh, yeah. some music just feel good when you yeah. hear it in, the, in certain settings? Yeah. Like, when them speakers drop and top off drop, you you don't even know if you know the words or not. You just, I, I, I don't know. Like you just chilling, like, bro. It's so that boy's special, and I think that's why he's gonna be the next because he's just nobody on on wax period right now that's rapping as smooth as Gunner is. Okay, so that that's perfect because yeah. that was about to, it's exactly what I was about to say. He can hit every market, yeah, and he's comfortable in every market. It's right. Drake, it's Drake, literally. He can sing. Yep. He can. He can. He can really fucking rap. Yeah. He can sing. Yep. And then he can do the melodic shit. Like I don't know no more. Like yeah. Um. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. Like, and then, the, and then all, that, that me and you. Was it with Chloe? Yes. Yeah. yeah me and you with Chloe. Yeah. He has been able to. And then like the just the the style we were talking about. Um. With the Detroit rappers and the up north the rappers, offbeat, yeah. the offbeat, he, he does that technically. Yeah. He does it the right way, so it yeah. it resonates with the rappers, but it also yeah. resonates with the kids. Like he is in a perfect and he position. He can hop on shit like that. Yes, like he can yes. jump on joints with like that. He is, yeah. Like it's no artist that yeah. won't be able to call Gunner, yeah. and that's important because the biggest were like that. It was no artist that couldn't call Kanye, no yep. artist that couldn't call Wayne. It was no artist that couldn't call Drake. Yep. Um, Future, F- you couldn't. You, it was no artist couldn't call Future. H- Hove, of course. Yeah. Uh, Kendrick, it, like those yeah. the biggest. 50 the biggest rappers yeah. can get on anything right and make it some and not i'm not talking about the rappers that i wouldn't throw 50 in that but the rappers that get on songs and it's just like okay jay-z was on this song yeah <laughs> not him he's not the example you know what i mean but like okay lil wayne was just on this song and that was just a lil wayne verse i'm talking about like they feel like they it were meant good. to be yeah. on this song like kendrick yes. with taylor swift facts that he with felt, the album. Yes. Like, it's so it's so many great but i think that is why just to wrap it up. I think that's why gonna exactly. Yeah. So to wrap up, uh, wrap up the show. I mean, it's the end of the year. Actually, let me, that just brings me into the next year, and so we can kind of just chill these last few minutes. And um, I just wanted to ask you as a friend, as yeah. a podcaster, as a as a young black man in America. Right. Um, and yes, we're starting to take the turn this year where we talk about normal things instead of just sports and music. Um, so <laughs> this will be the start of that, but yeah. subscribe. And I just really wanted to know, like, at, we're at an interesting age that everybody talks about your frontal lobe developing. Yeah, and, yeah. And if, you, if you're if you on Twitter... Listen, I ain't gonna lie, that shit is real. And that's, where I'm, that's what I'm getting to. So I, yeah. I want to know kind of just like, 
as you grow, as you went from 24 to 25, and now you're going from 25 to 26. Yeah. And I said something crazy as fuck to my friend. Yeah. But, uh, yesterday, uh, shout out to my boy Josh Playmaker. Uh, get at him. He does video shoots, all that. He's cool. I was smoking with my boy yesterday, and I was like, yeah, bro, like, I'm really trying to set this year up right because at 20, like, next year I turn 27, like, I'm trying to set my 30s up, so I'm making six figures by my 30s, yeah. and I stop myself. I said, that sounds crazy as fuck. Yeah. Like, I'm setting, these next two years are really setting myself up for the 30s because yeah. in the 30s I want to be pushing. I want I want this to be making yeah. us money. I want to have another hustle while I'm Facts. making. Like, and we hustling, and it's like, but it's easy at this point. Yeah. Like, your 20s are, you're supposed to be struggling. You're supposed right. to be in the struggle. You're supposed to feel that yeah, shit. Yeah, that shit's supposed to be. It's yeah, it's supposed to, to be yeah. hard. It's not supposed to, you're supposed to have your yeah. moments where you enjoy it, but it's supposed to be hard. You're supposed to wake up some days like, I don't want to do this shit no more. Facts. You're supposed to, you, but you're supposed to keep fighting through that shit. And yeah. when you hit your 30s, you're supposed to be a little bit more chill, a little bit more relaxed, but still busting your ass. So, yeah. I just really wanted to talk about another year goes, as another year passes by, like, how do you see yourself, um, how did you see yourself change when you went from 24 to 25? I'll even say 23 to 25, because yeah. it's more than just like 24 right. to 25. So I'll say 23 to 25, and how do you, how are, do you keep yourself as, because we're black, bro, so yeah. like, we live with that. How do you keep yourself, like, for a lack of a better word, like sane and right. calm and happy. Because as a man, it's a yeah. different type of calmness you have right. to it's hard. Like, a different sense yeah. of like, like, like I yeah, I just say calmness is probably yeah. the best word. Like when you're out with your girl yeah. and you see some shit going wrong, you yeah. can't panic. Yeah, you gotta Or be when calm, you yeah. when you walking back to your apartment and you see some shit or you hear something, yeah. you can't panic. Like, are you like yeah. you know what I'm? You know the moments yeah. I'm talking about. So, how are you navigating? Just how are, how did you feel with that transition so, twenty three to four, and then how are you navigating? So, so I'll hit your first question. I'll go more in detail. But my initial answer, I'll probably send this to my dad, who loved this. But um, uh, a big part of just me personally, like my calmness, like because you've known me for a long time, mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm much more calmer than I used to be. Mm -hmm. Like just across the board. Like I mean, you've known me since I was in middle school, yeah. so you know. But um, I really got to shout out my dad, my godfather. They are both uh, grandmaster martial artists, mm -hmm. and I think learning martial arts really, really helped. Like I'm not like a grandmaster, martial artist. <laughs> like I, I, I know martial arts, mm -hmm. but like um, it teaches you much more of mental and mind over matter in certain situations that allows you to stay calm in those times because as you learn to fight as you spar and you know other people who who practice different martial arts will explain to you like part of what you're doing is training your mind to think in these small moments so that you're not panicking once it happens so i think that is probably one of the biggest reasons you know that i stay calm throughout all situations because you mentioned it like as a man and you know a lot of people don't talk about this you know just in general because you know this type of like conversation people don't really have but like as a man one of our first jobs is to always be calm like i saw a tweet that this girl was like it's like a a teal flag or something i don't know i don't know what the kids be saying but <laughs> they were saying like it's kind of a red flag that our flights got canceled and my boyfriend is just like walking through the city like he's not bothered like that's 85 percent of our job 85% of our job is cool, all right. Either it's something we can change and there's an action we can take that we will do or there is something we can't do so we need to live with it. Mm -hmm. And I think as I've gotten older, decision-making wise, I've become, I've leaned into that a lot more. Okay. Like if there is something to be done, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. If there's not something to be done, we will live with it and figure out how to live with it. Cause that's what you really just have to do. Like, as you know, we're getting older with the people around us are getting older. Your brother's getting older. Like my niece, my nephew's getting older. So we have to talk to them and like, man, you know, I, I tell them, I told my, my oldest niece, you know, cause it's, it, and I say this a lot. It's nothing harder in life. Than, uh, there's no life harder than a girl going through, like becoming a woman, like from middle school to high school, there's no life harder. Agreed. I and, agree with that. And I'll tell, I was telling her, like, man, it's gonna feel like the end of the world some days. Like, you're like a lot of times, it's just like for everybody, it's gonna feel like everything's over. But it's not over if you're alive. 
Thank you. And if you're not alive, don't worry about it. Thank like, you. <laughs> it's nothing we can do then. But if you're still here, no. there's always options. It's always like that's probably the coldest thing about life. And the thing that's most reassuring is, man, that bitch going to keep spinning. Keep spinning. It's going to be another morning tomorrow. I, that leads into what I kind of wanted to say to, air, to answer the question, which yeah. was the, again, if you, uh, for God, it's just like, how do you transition? How did you mentally transition from 23 to 25? Yeah. And as a man, just how to more so a black man, like at a young age, and, and especially in an age that's like, well, I'll, I'll just answer that. Say the question first, but in at a young age, how are you staying calm? How are you staying content and things of that nature? So, you said something very important, bro. Because it, it, it's in 2020, um, 2019, I went through a real rough period um, with uh, my family and just my mental, and yeah. I was doing bad. Like I, um, I just like you know everybody. Every young man has some some point. I would say a young black person has yeah. a point in their life where they feel like. All hell is breaking loose. The yep. world is crumbling up from under them and everything. And again, my world wasn't, but I'm real tied to my family, and my family has a real effect over my emotions. Yeah. Um, and I, um, I'm not the family guy. Like I don't be a, like I gotta be every cookout all yeah. day, every day. Like I'm gonna stop in. I'm gonna go see my folks. I'm gonna say what's up. But like my love is like all the way to the hundredth million right. power. So them us not being straight fucks with me right and we weren't straight at that point and it fucked with me real bad i was sad i was fucked up so that brings me to 23 24 25 bro where i really took the mindset of what you just said like yo this bitch is gonna keep spinning right at that age that i was 21 22 around that age then and i yeah. think that was the first time in my life my, my dad told me this my whole life but it was the first time in my life i got the realization that this world don't give a fuck about you yeah and when i say it don't give a fuck it don't give a fuck it don't care if you tall if you short yeah. if you skinny if you fat if you black yep. if you white this world don't give a fuck about you yeah and the sooner you realize that, yeah, the sooner you will realize a day is just a day. Yep. And if you can take the moments that are bad and make them okay, yeah. take the moments that are okay and make them good, and take the moments that are good and make them great, mm -hmm. you will be okay. Right. But you cannot dwell on situations, right. good or bad, yeah. because this world is going to keep spinning. Yeah. Every day is yeah. going to keep spinning. You can go through loss. You can go through grief. Yep. You can go through happiness. You can go through sad. It's going to keep spinning. Yeah. And so when I went through that period and I looked up, and so and so had graduated. So and so got a new job. He was making this. Yeah. He was doing this. This deal happened. Like, and it was just like you see all of your peers are not even necessarily peers, just people in the industry are the the avenue you're trying to get to, and they're they're making their way. And it's like, well, fuck, I want that. This yeah. is where I want to be. But it's like, well, you've been sleeping for two days. Yeah. You yo, what have you done? All right, you went to your job for six hours and you came home and you played your game, you ate some wings, smoked some weed, right. and that was and then you went to record your show on a Saturday. It's not posted nowhere. Nobody knows you recorded the show after right. you leave. Like like what are you doing to be better? Mm -hmm. And that year was the year I decided I was going to work on my discipline within myself. Yeah. I was going to work on not letting situations define my week or define even my right. day. I yeah. give myself 20 to 30 minutes yeah. to feel. Like when the the, the soundboard situation yeah. happened, I gave myself an hour. Like, yo, cool off. But at the end of the day, yeah. what the fuck are you going to do? This, it's yeah. over. No, it, it don't work. The soundboard no. does not fucking work. What no. you going to do now? Literally. <laughs> so those would be my my... Those would be like how I how I yeah. transition. But I will say from twenty three to twenty five, yeah. I said transition. That's how I uh, stay calm. But it, from twenty three to twenty five, I think the biggest m mental hurdle I jumped was probably my my discipline. Yeah, I think the. And it's not always just you are so disciplined and you did everything the right way. Yeah. It's about being able to identify that you're not doing something right. the right way. So even if you go two and a half weeks yeah. and you fucking up every single day on your conscience, when you right. a disciplined nigga, you gonna think you fucking up. Yeah. 
you fucking up. You fucking up. And now, if you're working towards becoming undisciplined, eventually that voice is going to go away and you're going to keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. But my discipline, I know you can't get nowhere without discipline and consistency. Yeah. And so last year, those were the two words I'm pre- I was preaching to myself. And I did a, I would say out of, if I'm grading on myself on a grading scale, I gave, my, I would give myself a B minus for last year. Yeah. And this year I'm trying to get to an A minus. And next year I'm trying to get to an A plus. But I think in 2020, the the moment happened that I mm. needed to happen. And ever since then, I've just been building on right. that, really that pain. Like really, yeah. which is what you do when you black, you build on pain and you yeah. work through pain. And I've been building on that and trying to not let myself get back to that. And then lastly, like the realization, you got people counting on you, bro. Yeah. Like I want to take care of my family. Like I want to take oh. care of my parents. Like in 10, 15 years, I want to be able to tell my mama, like sit your ass down, go buy, yeah. like buy your house, y'all, you and y'all, you and dad go do whatever the fuck you want to do. Here's y'all allowance. Y'all go travel, do whatever the right. fuck y'all want to do. I want to be able to take care of my brothers. Like I want to be able to take care of my cousins. Like I, that shit like really drives me. Yeah. So it's like the last question you got to ask yourself though, for anybody trying to do anything that has to do with entrepreneurship, yeah. um, creativity, sports, entertainment, anything of that nature. Do you want the outcome? Right. Or do you want to do the work? Because those are two different things. Facts. A lot of people, 99.9% of people just want what comes with that. Yeah. I had to look at myself and ask myself, yo, I probably did this last, probably like early last year. And I said, with this podcast and shit, and loosely with the rap, but more so with the podcast and shit, like, do you really want to do the work for this? Yeah. Like, not do you want to be a big podcaster and and eventually have hundreds of thousands of views and be a millionaire podcast? Of course you want to do that. Yeah. But do you want to podcast? Right. Do you want to make that drive for Neck for the next two years. Yep. You want to make that drive yep. or buy this equipment, spend right. thousands yeah. of dollars on yourself nice. to get a hundred views for yeah. two hundred views for three hundred views. Do you want to work those little those little last increments, those little last goals? Do you right. want to reach those goals for the next two, three years to you 28, 29, and then at 30, 29, 30, when you see the riches and you're ready to handle it, all right. That work from 25, from really from 21, if we're being honest, yeah. from 21 to 29 proves to proves to the creator, yeah. proves to the industry, proves to yourself that yeah. you're ready for this. Facts. But a lot of people just want the ending. Yeah, I think your your point about discipline is amazing because like so much about martial arts is learning discipline, mm-hmm. like you know learning. And the biggest thing I will say for people, you know, if you are listening to this and you don't think you're disciplined or you believe you can be more disciplined because we could always be more disciplined. The biggest thing I would say is do not like when you're in your process of becoming more disciplined, don't try to overlord yourself. Don't say no matter what you're no matter what tomorrow you're gonna wake up in your first hour you're gonna do this no no because no. what you need to have is a pattern of discipline for the rest of your life so instead of saying as soon as i wake up between 8 p.m and you know as soon as 8 a.m 9 a.m i'm gonna work out do this workout then after that at 10 15 <laughs> i'm gonna do the problem is like that's just not how life works okay no. and and for the rest of your life you're not gonna be able to live this way so instead of saying at 8 a.m., I'm going to do this. Say, tomorrow, I'm going to do this. Yes. And the difference is when you don't overlord yourself. So when you wake up at 8.30 that next morning because your alarm didn't go off mm-hmm. or you overslept because, it's, you know, you're yourself, you can still say, all right, it's cool. We can still go to the gym. Yes. As opposed to, fuck, I missed my workout. Mm-hmm. I feel shitty. Yes. Fuck. Yes. Da, da, da. Like, yeah. that is probably one of my one of the biggest things. And discipline is so important. I try to preach discipline for so many people um, just because it will change your life. It, it will quick absolutely. Too. Like, bro, quick. Absolutely. You will look up in three, four months, yeah. and you will not be the same person. Literally. It happened to me last year. Yeah. I looked up to me, and my girl was like, yo, you're not the same person. Like, yeah. I said something to her. Like, yeah. it was a situation happened. Um, 
I had, um I do this thing where I'm real indecisive. Like yeah. I get real indecisive, especially when my friends are involved, because I'm a I'm a for my friends, I become a people please. Like not yeah. to random people, but for my friends, I wanna make sure everybody right. is fulfilled. So one day Tyrone and Javante asked me to come play basketball and Taylor, me and Taylor had plans to do something. Yeah. Um and when they asked at three o'clock, she said, "Go." She said, "Please go. I can go do something else. It's cool." And I said, yeah. "No, nah, we had plans. It's cool." And then I started, you know, you start thinking about the hoop yeah. session. Like, fuck that. I'm gonna go ahead and be yeah. I ain't hooped in two months. Right, it's like, yeah. all right, fuck. So we get to five thirty, and it's like, all right, Taylor, I think I am gonna go. Yeah. Fuck it, I'm gonna go. And Taylor was like, "Well, what the fuck? Like, I got ready. I've been here. I could. I don't got time to make no plans. Blah blah blah." Yeah. And I was like, "She was like, but it's cool. It's cool. Like, I get it. You want to yeah. go? Go go." And like, I was in this house tripping, like. Oh fuck! I'm fucking up. Like I'm fucking up both my friends. Like yeah. because I told them niggas I wasn't gonna come. They told them I was gonna come, and they yeah. like hurry up. And I told her I wasn't gonna go. And, and then I wanna go. Yeah. yeah. And so I walked. I I I got all the way to my car, cranked up, car, turned my car on, and walked back in the house. Yeah. And I was like, that was wrong to do to you. I was like, yeah. it was wrong to do to Javante and Tyrone as well, but right. it was wrong to you first. And I'm going, so I'm going to sit here. I'm going to tell. I texted Javante and I said, "Yo, I'm wrong. Y'all can be mad at me, but I couldn't do this to Taylor. This was fucked up. Yeah. Blah blah blah." And I just sat there. We sat in the house and went and did what we were supposed to do. Right. And I, none, none, nobody was mad, nothing. Right. And but she looked at me. She was like, "Oh, you're not the same person." Yeah. Me. And it's simple shit like that yeah. that you will see yourself in certain situations that you'd have seen yourself in seven months ago. Right. Have a completely different reaction, exactly, and yeah. that's how you know you're changing. And the last thing I will say about discipline is, it says something very important. He said, "Don't overload yourself, bro. Yeah. Know who you are. Facts. Know who you are, my nigga. Yeah. I smoke weed. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna sit here and tell myself, yo, you not gonna smoke for 30 straight days right now. Yeah, cold turkey. I'm, I'm not gonna do that. Right. I'm not gonna do that. If I w I don't want to stop smoking, I want to cut back on how much I smoke. So I do it at a realistic pace, and it, it has yeah. worked. Um, nice. I I'm a avid workout like i yeah. work out i I've, I've been working out regularly since it's just known me yeah but i don't eat right yeah. <laughs> i don't eat right yeah. but i'm getting better at eating right because yeah. when i used to eat right i used to try to do extreme diets yeah. and then i would like it said yep. i would get to day three yeah. and i wouldn't want to do it no more and it was just like instead of just being like all right we're going to scale it back it's like fuck right. everything because i didn't do what i said i was going to do and then you're pissed at yourself and now you're pissed at yourself yep. and now you're back in your bad habit yep. so know who you are and set realistic goals right. set a realistic schedule that you can be disciplined in even if you're if you have no, zero like one percent discipline right now and one percent if you have like if you barely have any yeah. discipline in you and you're like all right i want to start working out yep set an alarm right at a point in the day that you know you have free so if you get off work at six o'clock set an yep. alarm at 6 30 and then when you get home you're going to walk through your neighborhood yep. for 15 minutes yep. and that is your starting point and that is going to build your discipline in the gym for two weeks you're gonna walk for 15 minutes at six o'clock right. then the next time now you're gonna Run for five minutes and walk for ten minutes. Right. All right. Now we're gonna start going to the gym at this time. Yeah. And we're gonna walk on the treadmill and just build on the discipline. The last thing I will say is, yo, stop expecting things to happen oh, yeah. overnight. Yeah. Nothing in this world happened overnight. Right. There is no overnight success. No, I don't care who you saw pop up out of nowhere and called industry plant. None of that shit is overnight success. It took, unless God, your it daddy, took God six days to make the universe. Let's, come on now. <laughs> unless your daddy Jeff Bezos, yeah. Jay-Z, unless your name Blue Ivy Carter, right. our Northwest, our, uh, what's, what's Lil Wayne, so Cam Carter, yeah, Cam unless you, uh, our, our LeBron James yeah. Jr. or some shit. Adonis. Like, like you, it's not happening overnight yeah. for you. Adonis, it's not Happening right. overnight for you. You're gonna have to be disciplined. You have to put in the work, and it's gonna take years and years and years. Be nice. willing to put the work in because that benefit you're going to reap at the end of that journey, yeah, is going to be priceless. Yeah, and bruh, it's supposed to be hard. That's probably to to really answer your question. That is probably the the biggest takeaway I had between like the mid twenties, like especially like personally for me, just like things I went through in life, like you know physical things like having to leave college, having a bunch of surgeries, like it's supposed to be hard because if it wasn't, everyone would do it. Thank you, Ish. It's supposed to be hard and it's going to be a Thank grind. You, Ish. Anything worth doing is going to be a grind. Thank you. Ish. And like Daniel said, like the little goals like and I mentioned earlier in the show, I didn't even know this I didn't know this is you know would be a topic. But like at, you know, every year I go see my doctors at the end of the year and goals are set. Mm -hmm. 
and you know it could be like like I'm a bigger guy. The goal isn't yo this year you could be 160. Like <laughs> that's not, like that's never yeah. their goal. But last year hit my goals. This year every year it's about changing a little bit for the rest of your life. Thank you. Because that's the biggest thing, and that's why the discipline will help you. Because that change you want to make, a lot of people, they don't really want to make the change. Mm -hmm. Like, like I want to eat better, but I really don't. So next 30 days is just juice and oranges or mm -hmm. whatever, the you know. Mm -hmm. Or I really want to work out, but I ain't worked out in six months. So the first time I go to the gym, I'll be there two and a half hours going crazy. Like, yeah. you know, whatever. don't do Come that, on. bro. You, whatever <laughs> change you're going to make, you are going to need to make that change for the rest of your life. Amen. So do it in a way that you are able to do it the rest of your life. Do it in a way that you're okay with. Dan wants to eat healthy. Dan isn't going to stop eating everything that tastes good. He's going to learn how to cook better. He's <laughs> right. going to cook. Right. You right. know what? Exactly. Instead, of, instead of going out, we're just going to grab some food. I'll make it here. I know it's, it. it's going to be way healthier than whatever we're going to get outside. And that is sustainable. What mm. you see too many times is people like, man, I want to go to college. I'm going to take 14 classes this year. Like, bro, no, no. Do, it, gonna do, that. do it in a way that is fair to future you. Oh, that's fire. That's and, fire. And that'll carry. I think, and, I think that's it. And the last thing I would say before we get out of here is subscribe. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the last thing I'll say before we get out of here is, yo, this is the big. My dad used to tell me this shit all the time. My nigga, you going to work hard either way. Oh, yeah. Hell look, yes. Look, brother. Hell look, yeah. Look, brother. I know right now you 23. Yeah. You 23. You just got out of college. You got your good job. You get off work. You smoke a blunt and you play your game with your friends yep. and you get up the next day and repeat. And then on the weekends, you smoke four blunts on Saturday. Right. You drink with your friends. You go out to the club. Yeah. And right now that is fun as fuck for you. But it's taking away from your discipline. And that discipline that you're taking away from is going to have to come to fruition when you're 32, you're 33, you're 34, yeah. you're on your second kid, third kid. You got a wife you got to take care of. You got two yeah. kids you got to take care of. You got an animal. You got a mortgage. Yeah. You got bills, two car notes. Your daughter won a car in a couple years. All of this shit adds up, and now you work in two jobs. Yeah. Are now you working in a factory for 13 hours a night. Yeah. When all you had to do was work hard in your 20s. I, I'll close with now you're working as hard as you can, miserable for the rest of your life. Yeah. Because you didn't work hard in your 20s. Yeah, listen, the work is going to need to be done at some point. Whether you want to do the work now, you want to do the work later, or you want to do the work when you're 40, 50, it's going to be done. But I am, um, I will, yeah, yeah. So mine, what I'll close with is, Kind of like what Daniel said, how the world's going to keep spending. Damn. Especially men, providers of the household. Black men, specifically. Nobody cares. <laughs> That's the number one the, thing. The kind of, and, and not in a way that I know you're thinking. Not like nobody cares about us. Like, my niece, she put in her license. She want a car. I know the economy shit. <laughs> I know cars are more expensive than they ever used to be. I know she shouldn't get a car. But does she care? Nope. No, she doesn't care. My bills are due. Inflation crazy. They don't care. Don't give a fuck. Nobody <laughs> cares, bro. It is a it is a bottom like they say the NFL is a bottom line business. It's a bottom line world. Facts. Did you do it? Did you get your degree? Well, well, you didn't. Okay. Did you, <laughs> you get the job? Well, well nope. You doesn't didn't. matter. It is a bottom line, and that Black is and the biggest thing. And I know, like when we're coming up, especially with how bad the school system is, people are just passed along. Mm. People are, you know, da da da. We'll figure it out. But there is no, like, at your job, like, oh, yeah, I didn't do it, but, oh, you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like, okay, like, all right. What that is the bottom line. And remember that when you, like, yeah, we'll just, you know, really got, got to do it. Like, you don't really got to do it. Yeah. Like, okay. Right. All right. <laughs> cool. Nobody cares. Listen, nobody cares. Nobody cares. And I, we will end it there. We'll do more of this throughout yeah. the year um, with guests, get other perspectives on. Again, subscribe, like, comment. Thank you for sitting with us two hours and 15 minutes, two hours and 10 minutes, wherever we're at right now. Um, we appreciate you. Happy New Year. Happy holidays. Happy we hope you guys sure. have been blessed. Um, Stay got safe. lots of great gifts. Stay safe. Yep. Let people over in traffic. Salute to the women, as always. Man, salute to y'all, man. And we will see you next week. Yep.